Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Gratuitous RP and the Half-Rate Heroes. I hope that you're well tonight. I am Eugenio, also known as your friendly neighborhood Dungeon Master DM, Jazzy Hands. Super excited to be back with everybody this week. Let us go around uh, quickly and get uh, introductions from everybody before we do a little, uh, a little recap of what happened last week. Casey, let's start with you. I'm Casey, Casey H on social media, and I'm playing Nos, the uh, Hobgoblin Asimar. Fantastic. Uh, let's go up to Graham. Hi, I'm Graham, uh, Graham Crackers on Twitch, and I play uh, Taslin Evriel, the ne Shadarkai Necromancer. Fantastic. And Carl? I'm Carl. I also play Wolfcadio, Whitehorn, the Tabaxi Warlock of the uh, mighty Lion King, Lord Firemane, Nabanyan himself. And last but most certainly not least, Vinny. I am Vinny, a.k.a. Scuzzery, on well, all sorts of platforms. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I play Kale Irvine, the Ultra Guardian, Half Elven, Priest of Denier. Fantastic. And we are short one of our party members today. Uh, we are all sending healthy healing vibes over to John, who's out sick today. Wampum, however, will still be a part of at least the first part of tonight's episode, because we don't want to be without our dwarf fighter for this uh, for this combat that he's already begun. So, uh, before we do the recap, just a couple of quick announcements. Happy Pride, y'all. It is June 2nd, second day of Pride Month. Uh, we wanted to let you all know that for the entire month of June, uh, in as part of Pride Month and uh, World Pride 50th anniversary of the Stonewall Riots in New York City, uh, we are going to be raising money for the Trevor Project. They are an awesome LGBTQ organization uh, that particularly, as I recall, uh, supports LGBTQI a plus youth. Uh, I've done a couple of charity streams for them before, and they're an awesome organization. So any money that we raise this month in June is going to go to them. And any time that you down uh, that you download that you donate uh, to us and through us to the Trevor Project, we will enter you into uh, uh, hopefully a little giveaway, something something that we're going to do later on. Can't talk too much about that yet, but. I uh, might have something, but you should donate whether or not we do that, because they're an awesome organization. There's some information in the chat right now. We've set a goal of $500 for the month, which I think we can totally do. So, uh, think on that as we begin our recap. Who wants to tell us a little bit about what happened last time? Oh my god, not all at once, y'all. Okay, not all at on. once. Hold up. <laughs> uh... Uh, I'm on the wrong page because I was looking up some old journal entries. Oh, no. So I'll do it. I'll do it live. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> I w remember we were we wandered around this town in Highmore. Uh, it was a little village, and people's heads were getting cut off. And we're like, "What's up with that?" And we went to the mayor, and the mayor was like, "Oh yeah, there's a person who used to be the mayor, and there's this other council councilwoman who's like pissed off that you know." The, the things are the way they are, and we found out that there's a horse woman uh, who's been cutting people's heads off. And isn't it we, you that that bothers so much? I quote air quoted it, so oh. because I, everybody else says it, so I don't okay. want to buck the trend like some sort of jerk. <laughs> We've been um, trying to say <laughs> I always forget. Not dark rider is that what we settled up? Dark rider. Anyway, right. um, anyway, we found out that the dark rider is actually a, an entity from, I guess, the Shadowfell, but she's Fae, and she's the patron of the old, the old, uh, or the councilwoman, she's not old, she's still a councilwoman, and uh, she got taken, the patron got taken control of by the former mayor, and he's the one who's been having people's heads cut off. <laughs> so now we're at his place. And we're going to make all that stop. <laughs> That's pretty that concise. Stop. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, just a few other little details to toss in, since we will probably be dealing with some of that today. Uh, you did find the uh, the old warlock, I think you mentioned. Her name was Enelin, uh, who's on the town council. She, you used, you, uh, you sort of, um, oh, used her sounds uh, harsh, but you did. You, you used her to help get the mayor out of... Uh, the old mayor's house, Anders, uh, Andy's is the old mayor, and he had kidnapped Bricks, the current mayor, and had her tied up uh, behind his his study. And you all uh, gave Enelin the Cape of the Mountebank and had her bamf the two of them out to safety. So currently you are hoping, uh, Lefkadio did not see them in the back room anymore, so hopefully 
they are. They have made it to safety. Uh, the rest of you have engaged the Delahan, this fey patron, headless, uh, headless dark rider, <laughs> uh, <laughs> who carries a wicked sword and a uh, whip made out of some sort of humanoid spine. Uh, Livcadio, thinking that he had solved the whole problem, grabbed a little cage made out of cold iron that held the Delahan's head and grabbed the box that held the tome that controls her. And uh, he, you know, he heard that giving her the head would solve all the problems. So he tossed the head at her and said, here, catch. But unfortunately forgot that she can't actually touch the cage because it's cold iron and she does have a significant amount of fey blood in her. So <laughs> that burned her, did some damage, but it, the head is currently sitting in the center of the ballroom while she hacks and slashes at wampum. Uh, by the stairs. Any other important details I missed before we hop into this? I know we're all eager to get back into the combat. I totally looted the ritual knife. That's all I had, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that ritual knife's gonna come back to haunt you. I don't know how or why, <laughs> but it will now that you've mentioned it. Okay. All right. <laughs> Let's get back into initiative order. So we're going to get back into combat. We are at the top of the round. I think we're in round three now. And Taslin, you are up first. Yeah. I believe you're still just outside the house, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think I enter this, or I enter combat this round because it's okay. Great. Round. So you're downstairs. So you're going to be yeah. heading so upstairs. To where Taslin we all are. is sprinting full force. He doesn't know what's going on. He assumes <laughs> things have gone down. Uh, does he hear anything? Like any sounds of combat? I'm oh. assuming, like, the horse is whinnying, Wampum's yelling. Oh, yeah, it's it's not quiet anymore. This is oh, okay. no longer a stealth mission. Yeah, so I'm going to use my action to sprint, and I'm going to, like, run all the way up to here. Then I'm going to use my bonus action to use Blessings of the Raven Queen to teleport 30 feet. Fantastic. And get resistance to all damage, and that's going to put me 90 feet and about 10 feet from the head. That'll do it. The, and away from the horse. Running... Dashing, bam thing, so much movement, and off you go. So you are uh, the horse, the the dark rider. Damn it, the dark rider sees <laughs> you coming, and then sort of looks around, which is an odd thing to say because she's got a pumpkin on where her head should yeah. be. But anyway, well, uh, well, I was invisible. So oh, that's right, that you're also invisible. Would have worn off after I teleported and used the action. Fantastic. So she might have heard you, but she's really busy with this dwarf at the moment. Anyway, so uh, there you have it. Uh, now, does that invis- how did- someone remind me how Lefkadio got his invisibility. Uh, he has greater invisibility cast on him because I cast it, so I'm currently channeling that. Okay, so you're concentrating on that. And then I was invisible from the ring. From the ring, that's right. Got it. Awesome. Alright, so Taslin makes it into the room heading for the head. Kale. Lefkadio, you're on deck. Uh, Kale is running up the stairs right behind Wampum. And he will get up next to him to help form some sort of defensive line. He'll reach out. He's holding the, um, the Staff of Healing in right. one hand, the shield in the other. Right. He reaches out and kind of just pokes the, the Nightmare with the Staff of Healing <laughs> and okay. uh, attempts to cast Dispel Evil and Good on it and dismiss oh. it back to uh, Hell or wherever, the, wherever it's from. <laughs> so he's making a DC 18 Charisma. So, so many options. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yep, that'll do. see. Celestial, elemental, fey, fiend, or undead. I'm pretty sure this counts. So, oh. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. Charisma, you said? Yes. All right. Let's see what happens. I don't roll to the private one. Here we go. Oh, not quite. You said 18, right? Correct. Oh, not quite. <laughs> uh, so the. Uh, <clears throat> And you specifically poked the horse, right? Yes. All right. So the horse disappears. Uh, the We're going to say that the... Let's to put this away. There we go. The horse disappears. Uh, the horseman will say, damn it, the dark rider who's not riding anymore, so that's even more confusing, falls to the ground, will say that she is currently prone uh, on the ground because she was super not expecting that uh, as <laughs> her, her seat disappears out from under her. She manages to hold on to her to her sword and all of her things, uh, but she is certainly somewhat surprised. Anything else, Kale? Nope. Well done. Lefkadio, you are up. Right, so, uh, invisibly... Yeah. Oh, wait, I'm invisible. I was gonna try to look at the box, but I guess I can't see the box. Nope. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, can 
do I have a sense of whether or not it's locked? Uh, yeah, I mean, you could sort of, I mean, you could feel it in your hands, right? And so you try a bunch of different ways to open it, and it does not freely open. So either it's a puzzle box or it's locked in some way. <laughs> and right. you don't remember it looking like a puzzle box because you did catch a glimpse of it before you picked it up. Right. Well, then I guess I'm just going to try and uh, occupy Andy's here while everyone else is, uh, you know, taking care of the dangerous person. Yeah. I'm going to use my... Mm, actually. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. Now, instead, instead okay. of f fighting this, this fella, uh, <coughs> I will move up, so I'm right next to him, uh, and then I'll use my Rod of the Pact Keeper, and as an action, I will give myself uh, one spell slot back. Yeah, that feels like it might come in handy. <laughs> uh, and that's been done. All right. Uh, he is not well pleased, but he still can't see you, so there it is. All right. It is the Dullahan's turn. Uh, she is going to take a moment and do a little perception check. Oops. Public, please. Perception check. All right. Mine was way better, but that's all right. That's probably enough for her to have noticed. Uh, so she sort of she stands up, I should say, looks around. Uh, and realizes that, where is this icon? Here we go. Uh, realizes that um, the head, her, her head, the head, her head is in the center of the room and it looks like somebody is going for it. So she is going to, that is the wrong character sheet. She's going to, uh, let's see. She's going to take one more swing at, or how many swings does she get? Two more swings at Wampum. And uh, so let's start with that. 23 to hit does hit him, I believe. And an 11 certainly does not. Uh, so she gets one good bash in for 21 slashing damage against Wampum. And then, uh, and she will not be disengaging. So you all do as you will. Uh, but she is going to use the remainder of her movement to uh, begin heading towards Taslin and the head. So Kale and Wampum are free to take attacks of opportunity if they so choose. How menacingly is she coming? Uh, she doesn't actually look like she's coming for you. She really does look focused on the head. Okay. Uh, in, unless anyone objects, I'll, I'll take c control of Wampum. Yeah. Sure. So she takes those two swings, she gets one good gash on Wampum, and she just turns, uh, like, with, it's almost insulting, just with zero consideration for the two combatants behind her. And so I presume Wampum is going to lash out with one of his weapons. Yeah, he's going to use his axe. Uh, 29 Do it. Hit. Yeah, that almost certainly hits. <laughs> and he, he would like to use his uh, disarming combat maneuver. Alrighty. Which is a strength 18 DC. Yep. Let's see here. Uh, strength. Oh, surprisingly, not the greatest. So this might go well for you. 17. So does that mean she drops the sword, right? Correct. All right. Um, I guess you could just pick it back up. I don't know. Well, so she's done with her turn. So we're going to say that uh, to add it to... Okay, so go ahead and roll the damage on that, and then additionally roll a... What are his superiority dice right now? A d10. I'll mark another one off his sheet over here, and we'll add that to the damage. So it's 15 slashing and 9 uh, extra for the super, okay, uh, superiority so 20, dice. 24 altogether. And then, let me just make sure that there's nothing surprising about this. Disarm the target. Okay, great. So Can I... Um... Use my opportunity attack to attack the sword and try and, like, knock it across the room with the staff. Oh, interesting. Uh, I mean, sure, I like that. That split, I mean, no is the answer, but, like, <laughs> yes, because that's interesting. So, yeah, do it. Why not? Fuck it. Uh, <laughs> well, I rolled a two. Okay, well, uh, incredibly. I mean, you tried to catch it as it was falling from her hand, right. which, like, if you'd waited half a second, just hit it, like, kicked it on the floor, it would have been more effective. But. It's, it's <laughs> a tense situation, man. It is, it is. It's all <laughs> happening very fast. Uh, <laughs> all right, let me put this damage in. 24. Excellent. All righty. Uh, that was quite the turn. All right, Wampum, you want to take a few more swings? Uh, sure. Let's see. Yeah. Let I feel like over. probably he would very much. <laughs> All right, so is the sword still on the floor? 
Uh, yes, we'll say that it's uh, about halfway between uh, you and uh, Wampum and the the Dullahan. Uh, all right, so he'll he'll move ten feet and pick yeah. up that sword. Oh boy. Um. So I guess he's <laughs> he's yes. <laughs> I don't know how how would we do this. All right, ah, okay. So before he picks up the sword, yes. he's gonna throw his axe. Okay. And as the axe is in the air, he'll go yeah. and pick up the sword. Okay. And then toss it down the stairs behind him. <laughs> okay. So that's that's the move. I love All it. Right. I love it. So to throw, it's a Holy it's a crit. Holy shit! It's a crit. <laughs> do the uh, thing. So it's a 32, and it is, if, it is very important oh, that you all crit and not... Well, I guess now it doesn't matter because she doesn't have a Vorpal Sword <laughs> anymore, but... And, uh... 32, you said? Yeah. I, he has the goading attack, right? Uh, he does, yes. Would we like to do that one? If we have any more superior, superiority... He's got dice. three more as far as I can see, so... All right, then, yeah, I'd like, I'd like to do that. All right, do that. Let's see, that was 16 plus... Uh, goading attack. You can expend it, add the total to the damage roll, and then a wisdom saving throw from so his her. DC is 18. Woo! And that is, so that was 16 plus 11 more is 27 damage on this one. Very nice. And then we have a strength saving. No, wisdom saving this time. Just all the saves. Let's do all the saves. That's a 22. So that did so not... So she, uh, you... <laughs> I just imagine Wampum's goading attack is him making all kinds of strange noises to just try and, like, offend them so much that they have to go after him. But, uh, like, she... <laughs> I like your pumpkin. I have one just like it. She's... <laughs> That's right, he does! <laughs> she, uh, she gives him a thumbs up. No, she absolutely doesn't. Uh... Excellent. All uh, right. Uh, uh, he's got to have more attacks, right? He's got he's got two more attacks, but he's gonna great. Uh, as he threw the axe, grabbed the sword, threw the sword back. He circled around her, uh, and now he's gonna hack twice more. Great. Uh, we're gonna call that tossing of the sword just so that he doesn't accidentally cut off Kale's head. We'll call that one of his three attacks. Okay. Because he'll tail have taken a moment to aim a little bit. Sure. Because it it does occur to me that Kale is literally right there. All right. <laughs> So, Blast X one more time. Yeah, do it. 22 uh, to hit. I'm pretty sure that hits, but let's double check because these guys are... Yep, that hits. And again, I'll try that goading attack. All right. <laughs> wait. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, wait, how did... Wait what? There we go. All right, so another 17 damage. And let's see her do another wisdom save Ooh, all right she's got a 16 that time which means that she has disadvantage on all attack rolls against targets other than wampum until the end of wampum's next turn fantastic uh so she does seem somewhat irritated by him uh nas you are up uh so i've just gone full glorious <laughs> golden angel mode downstairs uh the light is still what is it? Is it kind of like mood lighting up in there? Is it like candle lighting? Uh, up on the in the on the second floor, you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's it's a it's fairly well lit, but it definitely looks like it's coming from like torches or candles or something because it's flickering. Okay, so comparatively, it looks like there's a small sun coming up the stairs. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, and if I hug all the corners just right, <laughs> then I ought to be able to get to her. All right. And what I'm going to do is you just hear the, 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 the typical Nos. And then I <laughs> rush her, and I would like to try to tackle her onto the ground. Uh, I love it. Uh, so that is going to be an athletics check for you. Oh, uh, also, uh -huh. before yes. uh, I actually make contact, uh -huh. I would like to rage. Okay. Advantage on that athletics check. Oh, look at that. Yep. I don't think she can match it even if she crits, but let's find out. She <laughs> Nope. <laughs> All right, so, so you shove her, knock her prone. It looks okay, in my head like a yin-yang symbol is going on. I love that. Because there's this shadowy darkness fey thing and then this glorious light thing over her. Yeah, I love that. All right. Anything, anything else, Doss? <laughs> Uh, I roar in her face inhumanly. 
Amazing. Now, are you on top of her or are you just knocking her down? I would like to be on top of her pinning her because she's prone right now, right? Yes. Yeah. So okay. I'm on top of her. Okay. She is uh, going to, she's not real pleased about this. Uh, so you are on top of her. She's going to use a fun little legendary action. And she is going to uh, grab at her hip and take that spine whip off of her hip. And she's going to swing it at you, <clears throat> excuse me, at you, Nos, to try and get you off of her. <laughs> <laughs> Roll 20 hates me tonight, y'all. Good for you all. Uh, all right, but she just fumbles the whip in her hands. Uh, she can't quite get good purchase, good, good hold on it. Uh, since she is uh, on the ground. So, that was Nas. It is Andy's turn. Andy's doesn't know what the hell is going on. I mean, he sort of does. Like, he's a spellcaster. He figures somebody is invisible. Uh, but he can't quite figure out what to do about it. So, he's going to turn uh, sort of towards the curtain, because that's where he heard something happening, although he doesn't really know where. And he is going to cast a spell. I'm just going to stop there. Counter spell. Yeah. <laughs> Right. I got that spell slot. He's pissed. Uh, he's also, though, going to use his bonus action and just sort of swing wildly with his scimitar because uh, he has war, the war magic feature. So he's just going to sort of swing wildly at uh, where maybe Lefkadio kind of is. So we're going to give him disadvantage. That is the wrong character sheet. I'm going to give him disadvantage. And yes. Uh, and let's see how this goes. Does a 21 hit you? It does. All right. Wow. So he swings blindly and luckily. Uh, that is whew, nine slashing and 17 poison from his poison scimitar. And you have disadvantage on the next saving throw that you make against one of Andy's spells. Not that you're going to let him cast any spells. <laughs> <laughs> so that seems a little overkill. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, and then he is going to also, uh, seeing the, the trouble that he's in, he's just going to start moving south. So, uh, Lefkadio, you can take an attack of opportunity if you so desire. Oops. Is that uh, for? No, counterspell. Nope. Reaction. Oh, right. Yes. All right. So he's going to go this way. Uh, excellent. This is going to be a fun little farce of the two of you running around, <laughs> entering and exiting <laughs> doors. <laughs> I love it. We are back to the top of the round. Taslin, you are up. Yeah, so I had a quick question. If yeah, I is there a lock on this uh, cage that I can see? Like a visible like padlock? On the head cage? Yes. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's particular. I mean, it's not like they were trying to hide the locking mechanism. Okay. So yeah, sure. Secondly, I know that uh, magic missiles means I have to target a creature. Since its Correct. head is in the cage, can I target the head in the cage and then have it hit the lock? Uh, well, if you target the head, it's going to hit the head because they're unerring. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to Scorching Ray the handle and just push it off when it melts. Feels like a much and, better idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I mean, go ahead and roll those attacks. It's going to be real hard to miss, but on the other hand, you could roll a natural one and accidentally incinerate her head. So. I, I mean, that's true. No way we're all going to be that once. All right, so I am upcasting it to fourth level. All three of them. So, fourth level, all, I'm yeah. getting... How many? Uh, I'm getting five rays. Five, five, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's roll these bad boys that oh, I totally have never messed up ones. with, ever. <laughs> do, 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 let's uh, see. One. All right, good start. Do, 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 two, three, Great. Great. four, <laughs> and five. Okay, none of them were natural ones, although one came fairly close. <laughs> um, what was that? That was a two. Yeah, oh, that was yeah. real close, that one. <laughs> Did the 12 hit the cage? Uh, I think the 12 did hit the cage. Uh, you know, yeah, go ahead and roll damage for all of them. We'll say it all hit okay. the cage. I will so say the cold nine, iron seven, has... Four, uh, yeah, what's that five. total? 9, that's 7, 4, 6, thir no, not 26. 16, 20, 33, it looks like to me. Uh, yeah. so, uh, you do notice that the the cage uh, appears to i mean part of it is probably a, you know well enough uh, part of it is probably the cold iron uh part of it might be some sort of enchantment that andy's put on it uh but it definitely seems to be a bit resistant to your fire uh but i think that is what do we say 33 and a half 15 yeah that's enough to melt that lock though 
All right. Or at so least enough that you could probably, at least enough that you could probably pry it open with a half decent strength. Yeah. Check. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. <laughs> do you want me to roll strength? Uh, I would like. I would love. You can go over and grab. I don't care if you can grab the cage. I think we're gonna have to wait till next turn for you to open okay. it up. If you yeah, want. that's fine. Great. All right. Oh. Yes. I'm oh, gonna move yeah, that would closer be to the cage, Come away on. from her. So probably on the far people. side. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. Yeah. All right, Kale, you're up. Lefkadio on deck. Uh, so where is the Vorpal Sword? Uh, the sword is somewhere down the stairs. Uh, Wampum just sort of chucked it that way, and you heard it clatter down behind you. You can turn around and have a look and let me see how far it made it. I think it probably actually is just maybe, like, at the bottom of that set of stairs. I think it probably, like, hit the wall and sort of clattered down a little ways. Okay, so, like, where the door is. Yeah. Um, so, I'm doing some measurements here. 20 feet. Well, fuck. I don't want to go all the way over there. I will stand, uh, kind of, like, guard over the, the sword. Okay. And I'll hold the Staff of Healing up high, focusing my prayer through it as I bless myself and Nos and Wampum. All righty. Nice little blessing for the three of you. Um, great. It. All right. Uh, Lefkadio thus begins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, I will start my turn by uh, grabbing my pearl of power and You're the grabbing, worst. grabbing another spell slot from that he's so mad he's not because he doesn't know what's happening but he would be <laughs> uh, and I'll I'll move 30 to feet tell. to find out Great. where he went oh there he is <laughs> find him <laughs> uh, actually no scratch, scratch that if I might can I scratch that Yes, sure. Of yeah. All right. Uh, I I feel like he wants to come out, but I don't want to chase him around because I might lose sight of him, and I need to not lose sight of him. Uh, so <laughs> I'll I'll stay right in the middle in case he pops out of either side. Definitely the smarter thing to do, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but definitely the it. wise thing to do. Uh, fantastic. <clears throat> Why don't you go ahead and make me, uh, as you, well, no, that's fine. Uh, fantastic. All right. It's the Delahan's turn. She's the most angry. <laughs> um, she's on the ground underneath somebody. She just wants her head back. Slash is supposed to be protecting this dullard over here. Uh, so <clears throat> she is going to, oh, that could be fun. Uh, yeah, why not? Wait, let me, uh... She also, like, is a little bit over every... No, that's not what I wanted you to do. She's a little bit over everything, so... Any way that she can try and, uh, wiggle out of the commands she has been given. Oh, perfect! Ten foot radius. All right, so she... <laughs> she just, uh... She sort of stops struggling and goes real still all of a sudden. And then she, like, wiggles one hand out and raises it up at the sky. And, again, it's very weird because she definitely says something, but there definitely isn't a mouth for her to speak through. It's very weird. Uh, but you see a flash of light and uh, a... Da -da 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 divine uh, black fire roars down uh, from the ceiling and catches both uh, Nos and Wampum and actually the Delahan herself uh, in a flame strike. And so I need all three of us to make... Let's do this publicly, please. Thank you. Dexterity saving throws. This seems like something that would trigger my danger sense, right? Uh, yes. Yes. I think. Uh, sure. So <laughs> that that was uh, Wampum's roll, but it it, uh, it just All has my right. name on it. Yep. And Got I'm it. going to let's see. He has the Shield Master Evasion, uh, which adds his AC bonus to his Dex save. All right. Uh, from the shield, I reckon. So that's a plus t two or three. So he has either a 17 or 18. 
Okay. I think it's just Wait. plus two because I have the plus one shield. Okay, plus two. So he's got a so seventeen plus two. So he has nineteen. His 19. save was nineteen. Okay. Yes. Okay, my save was 19, yes. Okay, so both of you save. So you will take half damage on this 20 fire damage. So each of you will take five. Wait a minute, there's supposed to be radiant damage in there too. What's happening? Oh, that's all rolled up together. Okay, so 12 of that is fire da- That's not right. Oh, 46 and 46. Okay, got it. So that's the fire damage. And then we need another... F- 4d6 for radiant damage so another 13 radiant uh, so half of that is 10 and 6 and then any resistances any of you all might have um, as an Azamar, I have the resistance to radiant but in addition to that I'm also raging so is that half of half, of uh, half? what is your what barbarian uh, uh, whatever it's called zealot yeah. Zealot. So you only have, as if I'm not mistaken, you only have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. That's when it. You're yep, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Uh, it's just the the uh, bear totem bear totem books that get all of the things. All right. So yes. Yeah, so you've uh, so you'll take ten from the fire and three from the radiant. And Wampum, I don't think has any resistances that I'm aware of, so he'll take ten and six. He is a ring all of fire right. resistance. So all right. Well, he'll take five and six. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fantastic. And next up, that is her turn. Uh, Nos is on top of her. So, sh- it, is, it is Wampum's turn. Oh, right. That's me. Mm-hmm. Um, Wampum, help me get this open! <laughs> so he'll, he'll look back, and, and then look at Nos. Say, oh, you- sorry. I want to stop real quick, because yeah. her flame strike is necrotic, not radiant, but I think you still have resistance to that, don't you, Nos? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. So it doesn't make any difference. Go on! All right, so Wampum will look at Teslin, look back at Nos, say, you got her, girl? Oh, I got this. All right, so Wampum will come over 15 feet and see if he can shake open that cage and grab that head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so make me a strength athletics check for Wampum. Athletics. Boop. 12. Oh, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. So he just tears open that mostly melted lock on the cage. Uh, can he grab the head? He absolutely can. And let's see. So he moved. Got that much movement left. Uh, all right. So he'll move 10 more feet with the head in his all hand. Right. Okay. You see. Uh, <laughs> what, what should I do, girl? I got the head. There it is. There it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, Kaslin! Right. Kale! What should I do? Give her the head! Put it where it's supposed to be. I'll throw it at her. Oh. <laughs> we'll have you, so you ripped open the door and, and went over there, so we'll do the action on his next turn if you want to throw it at her. Okay. Uh, yeah. I love it. All right. That was Wampum. Anything else, Wampum? Uh, Any bonus action that he's got that he's going to want to do? I guess not, because no. he's not attacking her anymore. So, does, does, uh, he st- does he still have a dash? Could he dash? Uh, used his action to pry open the cage, so okay. I don't think he can dash as a bonus. Yeah, no, it's it. All right, uh, all right. Uh, the Delahan is going to use another. Uh, oops, come on. It's going to use another legendary action to swipe with her spine whip again at Nos. Ooh! Oh, wait, wait. Uh, Can I use a luck to make her re-roll that? Yes, you can. Uh, Is she she Ah, not ah! She's still prone, right? Oh, you're right. She is still prone, so she rolled with disadvantage. So keep your luck point. I rolled a crit and a crit (laughs) fail, so it's going super well for her. Uh, Amazing. I don't even know what to say about that, so we're just going to move on. Um, she, yeah, I mean, that, that's her action. So. <laughs> I love it. Nos, go. <laughs> I will stay here, actually, because I don't, I don't sure. want to hurt her. Sure, 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 sure. I just want to pin her. Totally. Uh, yeah, that's fine. She didn't actually try and really get out from under you, so that's fine. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, Andy's is going to come out and finally see what the hell is going on out here and not be very happy about it, I have to say. Uh, so he's going to come out to about here. 
stare for a brief, very brief moment in utter shock and dismay, and <laughs> he's... He knows the odds of him managing to get this spell off are slim to none, but he's got to try. Uh, <laughs> let's see. If he's casting the spell, I counterspell it. I but this know one's you do. Third level, so I would have to roll if it was higher than that. Oh, and it is higher than that. But uh, I'm going to counterspell it at four. Hang on level. a second. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. What's the range on the spell? Okay, great. Okay, so. You can't, Tesla, you can't see Lefkadio, so you're both going to counterspell, which yeah, is totally yeah. fine. It is, in fact, higher than fourth level, so I need you both to make a, uh, spellcasting ability checks. Oh, okay. So, plus your intelligence, uh, uh, Tazlin, and plus your charisma, Lefkadio. Uh, 22 from Lefkadio. Sweet baby Jesus, fine, it counters. <laughs> Seven for me. <laughs> God, Bishab is on my ass tonight. All right. Yes, fine. What was a seven? Ugh, I'm so close. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even counterspell Lifcadio's counterspell with that. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> what would have been an automatic counterspell? Oh, that's time? true. <laughs> That would have made me very happy. But, uh, all right. Well, he's pissed. He's going to keep moving, at least, because that was what? That was 10 feet. So, 10. Oh, come on. Move, please. Uh, what type of elf is he? Uh, it's the first time we've laid eyes on him, so... Oh, that's true. Lefkadi was the only one who'd seen him before. Uh, he is half-elf, actually. And half -elven, when I should the say. dull hand fell prone, did her jack-lantern head fall on the ground? Uh, it, it's like a touch somehow in a super creepy oh. way. Oh. It's like sort of. It's like, like sort of spun around a little bit. So it's like it's like a quarter turn to the wrong side. It's very okay. uncomfortable. That's why it's a quarter turn to the wrong side. So it's facing like the wrong direction. That's why she keeps missing uh, <laughs> Nos. Speaking of <laughs> missing Nos, she's definitely going to try and swing again. She has three of these damn legendary actions, and I just want her to hit once, just for her own sake. <sighs> oh, Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, who's up next? Taslin, you're up. Yeah, oh boy. What do I want to do? Uh... Andy's is just looking... At, he, and, like, nothing about this scenario is A, good, or B, expected. Like, this all happened so fast. All of a sudden, the head is out of the cage. He doesn't know where the book is. This is just really going to shit. He can't get yeah, can, spells. Can you describe some of the furniture in the room? I mean, in the off chance I want to drop a fireball. I mean, there's not... <laughs> oh, well, yes, in that case. So all of the the walls, the, like, north and south walls, are completely covered in wooden bookshelves that have books on them. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I guess I have some small respect for learning, and I won't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I guess the Thank next you. next thing I could do is I will uh, drop... Oh, man, yeah, I, I, whatever. This guy doesn't have a good deck save, whatever. He's a wizard. Uh, I'm gonna I drop can. the, uh, spell on Lefkadio and cast Enervation. My god. And so a tendril of inky darkness reaches out from Taslin, and it's gonna go straight for Andy's, and he has to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just... 16 doesn't that does not beat save. my spell save he has and i just i want to i want to go ahead and be upfront about this he has a plus 11, 11. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. i don't think i've rolled above a 10 except for that crit that immediately got discounted yeah so he takes 23 damage of necrotic damage and I can use my action on each of my turns to automatically deal 48 necrotic what damage to him. What the hell spell is this? What? It's enervation. <laughs> and uh, the spell ends if I use my action to do anything else, but, or if he goes out of my range. However, I regain hit points equal to half the amount of necrotic damage well, he takes. I don't care about that. And I'm not Feels injured, free. but I just wanted to stick it to the man and make him <laughs> have to, like, dispel my magic. You and work. I'm gonna go right... 15, yeah, that's pretty close to him, so that he has a harder time oh, getting away from it. He does have Counterspell. Eh, too bad he didn't use it. Yeah. I would have Counterspelled his Counterspell, to be honest. No, I you already can. used it. I, hate I already you. used it. So mad. But that's all I've got. Fine, I would have rolled a 1 for his check anyway. <laughs> Alright, uh, fantastic. Kale! Uh, Kale will... Oh, wait. She's got one more swing. Just for Here we one. go. 
Let's see. Wait, let me make sure I can see it. Here we go. Wait, let's go ahead and go ahead and put it at disadvantage so I don't have to click it twice. Woo! Oh, it's a 22! <laughs> Is it hit? Yeah, yeah, that hits. All right. Good job. It's not even that much damage, I gotta say, but like, let's see. Well, that's not nothing. Wait, why? Oh, no, just 17. Because the 23 oh. was. No, it well, wasn't either. Yeah, why the hell? Why do I not remember about this? This See, I put these into roll 20 like three weeks ago, and now I don't remember. Hey, Judy, how come there's two dice there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Has a reach of blah, 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 and it deals that much slashing. Mm, no, it should just be 17. I don't know why the second one's there. That's my mistake in programming. Uh, <laughs> all right. She feels a little better. <laughs> Kale, <laughs> go ahead. All right, so it seems like we got the situation pretty much under control. I don't uh, know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Kale will um, use thaumaturgy to be super loud, and he will say, <laughs> Andes, surrender, and nobody has to <laughs> die. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. That's it. He, uh, he's just, he's so overwhelmed. I think that probably startles him in an embarrassing way, but anyway. Uh, Lefkadio! I don't even know anymore. Uh, right. So I am no longer invisible. Correct. He's, he's like, oh, hi. Uh, all right. So then I will, uh, move up to him. Yeah, all right. Uh, and I guess I'll take my whip out and uh, that makes sense. start going to town on this fella. Yep. Oh, wait. Does it look like he's surrendering after Kale's uh, command? No. no? Okay. <laughs> Just, I'm going give it, to give, it, give him the benefit of the doubt, but no. I'm not right. even going to make you roll. He's not. No. He's right. in big so, trouble. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's right. Yes, 24 so, here. 24, and uh, with my cat of nine tails, that's two more attacks. So it's a total of three attacks. 24, 24, 29. Yes, those all hit. So all 13, right. So 13, 16, and 13. 29, 42. All right. For you all should have surrendered. He hadn't actually taken a ton of damage up to now. Uh, and he... I mean... He either dies because you all kill him, or he dies because the town hangs him. Like, it's not a great situation for him, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, all right, anything else, Lefkadio? Uh, Just whipping the shit out of him. Nope, that's it. All right. <sighs> oh, the Delahan. <laughs> I gotta say, like, as somebody who is also a DM, I... <laughs> your tone and everything like i totally get it i've oh, yeah. so been here's there the thing, though. here's the thing like i i don't actually mind that you're kicking this shit out of no you guys, don't that's, right yeah i'm not like it, this yeah. isn't like it's not me versus you right mm -hmm. it just would be nice if they could do some cool shit because yeah. they're like yes. they're not unpowerful enemies it sure does seem like it but they're really not yeah, just like, make um, it up man just make it up yeah. they, the they, they blow up with a Sphere of Annihilation. All right. Uh, <laughs> sponge the dice. I can't. It's all 20. All right. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, at this point, she's not fucking around anymore. Uh, and now, also, now that Andy's is out here, he's he's barking commands at her uh, that she seems hell-bent on, on uh, obeying. So she's going to try and grab you. I'm pretty sure this is a touch spell uh, Nos, and she is going to cast Harm. So I need you to make a... Oh no, it is not even. Alright, make me a constitution saving throw, please, Nos. 26. Yes, that'll do. Uh, so half of 14d6 necrotic, which of course will be halved for you uh, again. So half of 47 is 23, and half of that is 11 necrotic. So it hurts. It's not pleasant. You may be resistant to necrotic damage, but that was not a pleasant as she reaches out and just... I know it's not a touch spell, but she's just going to sort of grab any part of you that you can, and the shadows that have been sort of wreathing her this whole time just dive their way into you, and uh, you shake off a good portion of it, but it was definitely... definitely not an insignificant... Ow! You Absolutely. bitch! 
totally reasonable at this point. Yes. All right. Uh, that is her action. She is struggling and writhing, but not really that hard. She's not making a check to try and get out. Wampum, you are up. Uh, all right. So Wampum will close the distance, uh, lean down, say, yeah. all right, you better not hurt me, girl. <laughs> and then he... A late for that, but all right. More. You better not hurt any more after I give there you... There you go. Thank you. The head. I forgive you for the first little bit. <laughs> Here's the head. You Amazing. should be... You, you, you don't have to do what that fellow says anymore. All right. Give to the head. Uh, so... She has the head uh, sort of knocks off the, the pumpkin, which, of course, the, the inner glow of it immediately goes out and sort of jams the head on her uh, on her neck. And she sort of reaches up. and It's like, um, oh, what is that character's name? Uh, the zombie in Hocus Pocus. Um, um, somebody in chat knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Billy, is that his name? No, Billy's the whatever. Like the guy from the Cure. <laughs> I remember what you're talking about. I right, don't yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it's Whatever. Billy the zombie. So she, yeah, it is Billy, right? Okay, great. So he, like, turns, like Billy does, he, like, turns his head back around. She turns her head back around and, like, adjusts her jaw. Um, and you can see sort of a, for a, uh, there's sort of something in her eyes. There is a, a darkness flickering there, and she looks like she is uh, fighting something really hard, but at least now she has a chance to fight uh, Nos, she won't use her legendary actions at this point. She's fighting at least that hard. Nos, you are up. I will sit back on my haunches. Still on her, but over her now, and no longer using my hands to pin her sure. down. And uh, yeah. I'll ask, are we done? Um, she sort of grits her teeth, and she sort of shakes her head, and she says, oh, the book. The book! Who's got the book? Uh, and as you yell that, Andes looks extremely concerned about that very question. Uh, turning around to face Lefkadio, who has the book. Uh, <laughs> uh, goodness, he really wants that book. So, this is such a terrible mistake, but we're going to do it anyway. Um, Andes is going to reach over to you and try to grab the book. This is going to go so well. Uh, so he's, we're going to call this sort of like a, a grapple thing. So you can use acrobatics or athletics opposed to his athletics check. We'll I'll disarm here. It. Oh, well, he, he has, it's again, 11. a plus eight for his athletics and still got a 13, but it's more than 11. Okay, so he grabs the book from you. Uh, that was his Quite. action to grab it, though, and he is going to... Ha ha ha, what's he gonna do? Does he have that spell? Yes, he does. Mm, yes, he does. So, he's as soon as he has the book, uh, he is going to... Oh, well, he's gonna try and cast Misty Step. Who's counterspelling this one? <laughs> Get him, Taslin! <laughs> I'll counterspell him. Fantastic. He had to uh, try. Yeah, I, it's I only spell. have it at level three. So. It's, it's the second level spell, so you're yeah. fine. Uh, all right, so he does not... Inf he's like... Taslin's going to laugh at him. Like, oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yep, he's, he sort of nods. He's like, you know what? Yes. Uh, and then he's going to run. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six. How, how bad is he looking after that thrashing? I mean, not great. Uh, he's not, like, about to drop, but he doesn't look great. Lefkata, you can take another swing if you would like, since you didn't counterspell this round. 16. Uh, actually, I don't think a 16 hits him. Hold on. It does not. Uh, your your flail sort of uh, hits up against... It, it sort of flashes and flares a little bit when your flail hits, and he seems to have some sort of uh, arcane uh, armor on him, some sort of shield. It's mage armor. I don't know why I'm being coy about it. Uh... <laughs> uh yeah, all right. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say things are looking up for him, but anyway. Uh, a, little. a little bit. Tazlin. Yeah, uh, Tazlin's going to walk right over here. You could and he could long. channel his enervation again for the automatic hit. But Tazlin isn't a petty wizard, and, you know, it's not as fun when it's not like a Voldemort Harry Potter, like, zapping. Is that what's happening? Like, okay, great. And he's going to cast Finger of Death. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, this time he is going to counterspell it. Oh. <laughs> now I remember he has, 
mean he's going to try. What level is... Uh, that is a 7th level spell. <laughs> okay, so it's a DC 17, right? Yeah. Awesome. This is... Is this his sheet? Yes, it is. That one. That uh, one. <laughs> all right, here we go. Oh! Oh, uh, everything's ooh. looking up Andy's. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she got her head back, so this is not going to go super well for him. Okay. Uh, all right. Anything else, Taslin? Yeah. Then, seeing that he just countered my spell, I'm going to walk five feet around. He, yeah, totally. He turns around and like starts to like try and laugh back at you, and then like looks at his life and looks at his choices, and is like, "Ah, right, you know what?" As I'm walking towards him, I'm just going to say, "The gig's up, Andy's. You can. You're going to die either way. You might as well." live a few days longer and plot your escape while you're in jail. <laughs> he looks at you just like, what? No! Alright, Kale. What's up? Um, What's up? So... He heard Nos just take, like, damage. He was like, ow, fuck! Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, Like a bee stinger or something. So... Oh. Let's not be offensive. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but really, that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, so he's going to run up, and he's going to tap her with the Staff of Healing and expend a charge to cast Cure Wounds on her. That. For a big fat uh, seven health. And then he's going to go back to the Vorpal Sword. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Goodbye. All right. Excellent. <laughs> Left Cadio. He took the book. I was like, get back here with that book. All right. So <laughs> Left Cadio has no? 40 feet of movement. So he'll use all of it to get uh, on the other side of him. Yeah. And <laughs> Dude. I don't have great <laughs> athletics. So I'm going to just uh, continue yeah. whacking him. Yeah. <laughs> So support that again, choice. With my whip. Again, it was the wise choice. Three All times. Right, let's see. Yep. Uh, no. And that one, uh, 22 and 18. So he is going to use... Ah, oh, bloody hell. He counterspelled you. He doesn't have a reaction left. <sighs> He's going to shoot. No, yes. Okay, uh, the other two, uh, the 22 and the 18, do hit. So that's a 13 and a 14. All right, for a total and of 27. With bonus action... Yeah. Uh, I'll grab my double barrel crossbow, hand crossbow, yeah. with my crossbow expert feet, and take a pot shot at him. Ready. Um, 19, uh, no necrotic damage on that, but 19 to hit for 12 okay. piercing. Okay, 12 piercing, not pleased. Great. All right, he j he's got scourge marks, and he's got a crossbow bolt sticking out of one shoulder, but he has the book. All right, the Delahan needs to make a little saving throw for herself so that she can resist the compulsion of the book. She does! Uh, so she, uh, you're not on top of her anymore, Nos, right? Uh, I'm, I'm, my, I'm, my haunch is on top of her, but I'm not using my hands anymore. Okay. Uh, so she is going to sort of, like, gesture towards Andy's uh, and see if you'll let her up. She seems... She's still fighting, but she seems somewhat in control of herself. I don't trust it. Totally. I don't know her. I don't trust it. Uh, she then is going... She really wants at him. So she is going to... She's going to cast a spell at him. Uh, where is her character sheet? Here we go. She's... Oh, she can cast harm on him. That sounds like fun since we now know it's a ranged spell. So, she is going to cast harm at him. Uh, so, he needs to make a constitution saving throw. That is the nightmare, not Andy's. Uh, constitution saving throw. I'm pretty sure that fails, but let me check her DC. Gotta look in here, because I didn't write it down, because I'm a doofus. Uh, spell casting spell save DC is 19 so he's going to take a lot of necrotic damage so she just yells out and you holy shit she once you once again see that shadow uh, and you flinch for a minute Nas because you think it might be coming back at you but she throws her hands out towards Andy's and shadows just spear straight for him, beeline for him, smack him straight in the chest, and he sort of goes down to one knee for a moment and pushes himself back up. He is not down, but man, that hurt like a, like 
real bad. Uh, <laughs> uh, da, 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 da. Yep, again, there's my mama. Great. Uh, and she sort of looks back at you meaningfully, Nos, uh, and uh, sort of reaches for her uh, for her whip to try and get it in one hand. Uh, that is her turn. Wampum, you are up. <laughs> I'll show you how it's done, cat. <laughs> and then, I, don't, I don't even know how to deal with it when two characters played by the same person are trying to one up each other. I just can't. <laughs> uh, all right, so the first one's uh, sixteen to hit. Uh, yeah, no, sixteen does not hit. Second one's uh, twenty-four to hit. Yes, that hit. <laughs> uh, and he'll use so. Well, okay. Uh -huh. well, he'll do all three attacks. Okay. Uh, last one is uh, 34 to hit. <laughs> so that's uh, 16 and 17 slashing damage. All right. And he does have one more uh, superiority die if you want to mess with that. Uh, yeah, I reckon. Uh, he'll, he'll do huh? the... Oh, uh, like I'll let you disarm him of the book if you want. Oh, perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. Yep, definitely. All right. So roll the damage first. I don't think this will Seven. kill him, but out so that is 16 plus 17 is 33 plus 7 is 40 no okay so he's still up although he looks like absolute shite and now he needs to make a strength excuse me strength saving throw right yes 18 Alrighty. strength is shockingly not his strong suit so to speak <laughs> it's not even a crit fail for him all right so he drops the book and he's <laughs> All right. Uh, can can Wampum kick the book over? Oh, kick! No, no, no. He won't kick it at the Dillahan. He, yeah. he, it's a lot of choices. All right. With his bonus action, he's going to use his shield, uh, his shield master bonus to uh, do a shove, which is uh, technically trying to knock uh, uh -huh. the wizard down on the ground. Okay. Got it. And I don't, I, I don't know. This, I think it's an athletics check, so 27. I think I it know. is. Yeah, let's see. Shieldmaster. If you aren't, no. Bonus action. Da, 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 da. Yes, it is. Okay, great. Um, I can't. I mean, he gets to use the acrobatics, but it's not going to matter that much. Oh, it actually will matter. Let's see. Okay, well, that wasn't terrible, but not good enough. So down he goes. He's very he's closer to the book, so I guess he's happy about that. He's also <laughs> much closer to death, so that's not awesome for him. Um, all right, Nas, you're up. I see the book hit the ground in slow motion, and it's very loud in my ears, like yes, thump, thump, thump. yes. So my eyes will dilate, and then I will use half my movement to stand up, and I will yep. get there. All right. Make a dive for that book. Yes, you can dive on <laughs> from one prone position to the other. But yeah, you can dive on top of the book. Or do you want to just pick it up? Uh, I want to do it amazingly. And, yes, I, in, yes, in absolutely. In epic action. So yeah, <laughs> yes. I'll dive it and I'll do like a little roll to... I was just going to say, maybe an acrobatics check. It won't keep you from doing it, but I want to see how cool it is. Okay, well... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I got 11. I mean, you got it. You have yeah. the book. We'll, we'll stop there. I'll, uh... I'll hold it up and be like, Stop! Uh, and when I and we, we do recall that when we say the book, we actually mean the cold iron box in which the book is being held. Um, it's excellent, right? Oh, okay. Andy's is like <laughs> really, really, y'all. Mm. Choice to make. Not sure. It doesn't have that anymore. Okay, he's gonna take a little tiny step. No, he's not. <laughs> he can't do that. Uh, so he's going to turn and face the three of you, uh, Nos, um, Wampum, and Lefkadio. <laughs> he's just going to, like, say a prayer to you don't know who that he gets to cast this spell and try and cast a spell. Any Anyone? Oh, I will counter spell it. I roll, because it's a fifth level, so it's a decent Oh, I'm using 15. my sixth level. Mother of oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> I saved that baby as expecting his last spell to be you like looked, the Disney You spell. looked like you were concentrating so hard last time. He was so confident that he had you. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah. So, uh, that's right. so a little, like, snowflake falls from his hand. Uh, Hold, I basically made that spell. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Uh, I mean, and then he's he's gonna he he's not just gonna stand and take it. He's gonna run away. Oh no, he can make a weapon attack as a bonus action. So he's gonna. This is gonna be hilarious. He's gonna try and hit Nas because Nas has the book. <laughs> This is going to go so well. I'm excited about it. Uh, I All don't right. think I'm raging anymore. So. Oh, that's true. All right. Well, let's, let's see what happens. Does an 18 hit you? Yeah, but this is very important. So I think I'm going to call upon my powers and pray to my goddess and uh, cause him to roll that again. All right. Here comes. That is not him. Here that's we go. Better. That's not. That's not. That's a vorpal sword. Okay. Control. All right. Yeah. Uh, this is him. That is also better, however. That is also better. Okay. All right. So this one's going to do eight slashing and 20 poison damage uh, as his his scimitar secretes some more of this nasty poison. Uh, and then he's going to uh, run. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many of you. It's a terrible, terrible idea for him to try and run. But he knows he's going to die, so he's going to do it anyway. All right, everybody. Take your attacks. See how far he gets. I guess Taslin can't. I know. It's so disappointing. It's so disappointing. <laughs> uh, 21. He... Oh, he still can't do it. It's at the end of his turn. Okay, yes, that hits. 11. He's still up. I oh. don't think I can take an attack on him, because I'm using a glaive, which is a two-handed weapon, and I'm already holding something. Oh, that's true. You've got the book. That is true. Thank you for that honesty. Fourteen. He has three hit points left. <laughs> yeah. So Lopcadio whips him with the twenty-three for fourteen points of damage, and yeah. Can I? All right. So just whip and and that. Can you can you punch him? Oh no! I was gonna say, can I trip him? <laughs> just hold my foot out. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Uh, yes. Mm, let's see. He's gonna make a... Why don't you go ahead and make an athletics check? And he'll make an acrobatics check, and we'll call it that again. Oh, and down he goes. He'll make it to there. Um, well, no, actually, I guess you have to make it all the way over to here. There you go. All right, so you trip him. He goes back down. He's just bleeding from every which way. He knows he's beaten, but there it is. Taslin! Oh, man. So many choices do I kick him in the head and keep him alive? I should probably roll for this, because I don't know what Tazlin would want. <laughs> okay, uh, Tazlin is going to walk right up to him. Oh boy. Line up his uh, quarter staff and just whomp right across the head non-lethally. Non-lethally, okay. Roll that uh, attack. Yep. And it's at advantage because he's prone, correct? That is correct. <laughs> that doesn't hit. Oh, man. <laughs> Taslin just whiffs it. He rolls out the way. <laughs> he does yeah. kind of, like, he he feels like shit, but he does kind of chuckle at that. Because <laughs> it was, I mean, you really went for it, and oh, he just yeah. was not where you thought he was going to be. I know. Man, I should have just gone with Taslin electrocuting him to death. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Taslin is just going to ask him to surrender. And yeah, he sort of looks up at you with like one eye swollen shut, blood dripping from his forehead. And he's just like, no. <laughs> all right, that, that's all I've got. Kale! Uh, Kale will make one last attempt to use the command spell to command Andes ah. to surrender. So you need to make a DC 18 wisdom saving throw. And I don't know if you would... It doesn't say he's, like, actually charmed, but it seems like kind of a charm spell. Yeah, that's what I'm going to check. Yeah. Give me one second. Da, 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 da. The... Um, so, it must have seen it. It has no... It doesn't have shame language or if the command is directly harmful to it. No, this does not cause the charmed condition, and nothing in the text of the spell says it's a charm effect, so you're good. Okay. All right, so he makes a wisdom save? Correct. All righty. <laughs> He's not good at those. <laughs> no. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, okay. So I will say that uh, the, the command only lasts for one round, so he will surrender for six seconds, unless you want to give him something a little more... Uh, specific, but again, it only lasts for six seconds, so you tell me how you want to 
Nope. Uh, surrender? So he just says, this is your last chance to, and then the command spell is surrender. Surrender, okay. Like, like preacher style. Like right. He gets a deep voice at the very I love last that. word. Anyway, yeah. I love it. Lefkadio. Uh, I'll have heard Kale do this before, so I know Definitely. that his command is charged with divine energy. Definitely. And you'll feel uh, like you can't attack someone who's surrendering. So it'll be... He'll, he'll stand down and look warily at the uh, headed horsewoman. Okay. That's not better. <laughs> it's better. Is it? <laughs> because, okay. yeah. All right. Uh, great. So, the... <laughs> ah, the Delahan's turn. Hold, please. Uh, okay, cool. So, the Delahan is going to get up, because she finally can get up. She's going to move this way just a little bit. She's going to stare down at Andy's on the floor, who's going to sneer over at, is the wrong character sheet, sneer over at her. And she is going to... Do something that doesn't hurt all of you, I think. <laughs> but what is it? Ah, this is what she will do. Uh, so she is going to, you see, <clears throat> it should be two. You see, uh, sort of, it's weird. It's it's similar to that dark shadow energy that she used against Nos and then against uh, against Andy's last round. Uh, but this one sort of has a has a shimmery, almost shimmery sort of sheen to it. She just points a finger at Andy's uh, and without saying a word this bolt of dark energy flies out at him. Uh... <laughs> and misses him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's uh, yeah, it misses him. Cool. Um, that's embarrassing for her, man. Uh, <laughs> Taslin shares, like, a completely understanding nod with her. Uh, here's what she's gonna do, though, because, like, she is, now that she has her head back and is not directly under his command, uh, she has a little bit of dignity. So she, <laughs> she's gonna try to, like, make it look like she meant to do that. Oh, no, it was very clear that she just missed. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Great. All right. Well, she. Okay. It's Wampum's turn. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what's happening, y'all. Um. Uh, I look at uh, Nos. The sun. Or, <clears throat> I, I look at Nos. And she's, like, <laughs> she's sometimes my conscience. Do I see her standing down? Oh, I don't know. Do you? I am. All of my attention is on the uh, cage in my hands, the book cage. Yeah. Right. Uh, Wampum will ready an action uh, if the Dullahan or the wizard try to take the box. Uh, the Wampum will retaliate with a neck. Okay. I think I misunderstood you. Say that again, because I was looking at her, her, his stats. Oh, he's readying an action? Uh, readying an action. Okay, yeah, that's the part I missed. I was okay. like... Okay. All right, yes, readying an action. Uh, Nos. I'm going to beat my wings and rise up into the air so that I'm oh, out boy. of reach from everybody. Yep, that feels like a wise choice. <laughs> and then I'm going to try to break this box. All right, uh, I'll take a strength athletics check. Oh, yes, that'll do. You just you find right where the latch is, uh, or where the lock is, and you just rip it off of the box and open up the box. And inside you see... <clears throat> inside you see uh, this bound leather tome that is... Uh, you actually all sort of, you know, Nas is sort of hard to miss at this point, uh, glowing brightly as she is. Uh, but you do see sort of in her hands inside this box uh, a sort of pinprick of darkness that that gives her 
her aura of light a run for its money. Uh, there is, there is, it's uh, even to call it dark almost isn't enough. It's almost like it is, it is anti light. Whatever is coming from this, from this book inside this box. Uh, and immediately, as soon as you open it up, uh, you notice the Delahan turn her head upwards uh, to look at you, Nos. <laughs> and he's, he's gonna cast a spell. Oh, I'm gonna counterspell it at level okay. three. Oh no, he's not gonna cast a spell. He has to surrender, so he does not cast a spell. So take that spell slot back. Uh, yeah. And he just sort of, he doesn't get up. He just turns over and he like puts his hands up in the air. <laughs> like, take me away, officers. <sighs> Taslin. Yeah, I'm gonna cast Witch Bolt at level three. Because I'm standing behind him, and we just saw the doll hand, like, guiding Bull and, like, make a bad show. She, was, she wants him dead, understandably. Tazlin doesn't care for this guy, and I'm just gonna zap him all Emperor Palpatine, like, while he's Do on it. the floor. So Do he it. needs to make me a wonderful, wonderful save, no, I believe. You make, no, you make an attack roll. Oh, you're right. I think this is the first time I've used this spell in this campaign. Great spell. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, which bolt, which bolt, which bolt. That one. You can do it. <laughs> that one. one right there. Do- I know, no, it's the no, one. No, the other one. one. It's over. Yep, that's the one. Yep, oh, okay, no. yeah, sorry, I was wrong. It's, yep. Yeah, you were close. Yeah. Do I not have it on my, I have it on my roll 20, that's why. <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> that would explain it. I just imagine, like, Taslin standing there with his hand full of lightning, just, like, waiting. Okay. And an 18. And 18. Uh, he's gonna, I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna die. <laughs> yes, it hits. It hits. It is at level 3, 4, a whole whopping possibly... 15 lightning damage. Okay. He's, he just, he, he, he dies with a sort of finally on his lips. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right, uh, so I will uh, actually, because something is going to happen shortly, uh, I will stay in initiative for just a brief moment. So, Kale, what are you up to? Um, Kale will run over to get like under Nos, basically, yeah. and be like, give me the book. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Great. Lefkadio. Um, yeah, uh, I guess uh, I will ready an action if anyone tries to hurt Nos. Yeah. I'll, I'll whip him, so I'll get into right. position to do that. Right. Uh, sort of at the same time as T- Kale is running over to be underneath Nos, so is the Delahan, uh, and she also says, give me the book. <laughs> uh, so, great minds, I suppose. Wampum. <laughs> Uh, again, still readying. Uh, does does the Dullahan look like if we don't comply, bad things will happen? Uh, no, she's focused pretty intently on Nos, but she like she put her her um, whip back on her on her belt, and she doesn't look like she's you know readying to cast a spell or anything. Okay, well, uh, ready. Though, though she does look pretty serious about wanting the book, I will say, but not like she's about to do violence for it, at least not yet. Well, then uh, Wampum will ready an action if uh, anyone tries to hit Nos. He'll axe him. <laughs> all right. Uh, at this particular point, let me have you all make uh, wisdom perception checks for me, please. All right. Okay, well, not Lefkadio or Nos. Uh, 22. 22 for Kale, 23 for Wampum, 21 for Taslin. All right, so the three of you uh, hear footsteps just running up these stairs uh, and around uh, the corner and at the top of the stairs. Ap- oh, you can't see that. Appears, uh, um, I just blanked out her name, Enelin. Uh, and she sort of looks around and surveys the scene for a minute and her eyes, uh, oh, we should find out if... Uh, the Delahan notices this. Wasn't Annalyn wounded? 
when Anlin she was. It. Yeah. Yes, she was. Uh, I don't know why that did with disadvantage, but a 16 was enough to hear her coming up the stairs. So uh, the Delahan also turns around and the two of their, uh, the two, their eyes meet and uh, Annalyn just bursts into tears and runs over to, oh, that's the horse, runs over uh, to the Delahan and just throws her arms around her. Uh, and we can drop initiative at this point. Uh, so, tell me what's going on. I'm gonna look oh, down yeah. at the... No, so you can give me the book as well. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna look down at Dullahan and I'm gonna be like, I appreciate your situation. I am sensitive to your plight. We must do this in an orderly fashion, however, to ensure that our asses are covered. And I will go down and I will hand the book to Kale. Hey. I'll take the book in what would normally be my shield hand, but I don't have my shield because I had to hold. Oh no, geez. So I'm holding the book of leaves in one hand. And oh no, so many books. I'll just like toss the staff over to Lafcadio, staff of healing, and then I'll take the book. And if he catches it, he catches it. If he doesn't, whatever. It's staff of healing. Nobody's going to get killed by it or anything. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> hit somebody real hard with it, I guess, but yeah. Uh, excellent. Okay. So, Kale has the book. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? Uh, making sure that uh, good old Anders is dead. So I might hold. I might hold the witch bolt an extra round of just zapping his corpse. You're and, the worst. <laughs> and then after after I'm good and content that he is dead, I am going to loot his body and start like checking out that scimitar. Well, okay. Um. <laughs> So, here was the plan. Uh, Actually, tell. can I... Uh, so I would have... Can I back yes. up real quick? Can I yes. drop the staff and instead yep. just hand Lafcadio his book back? Because that's yes. his. Yes, that feels... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. And then I'll now have a book in one hand mm -hmm. and a book, no book in the other. Great. And then with my other open hand, um, I was going to run over to... Uh, Andy, and Anders, Anders's, Anders's corpse. Andy's, Andy's corpse. Andy's is his corpse. And, um, yeah. tell, like, so, Taslin, you're still, like, which, like, on the oh, yeah. power! Yeah, exactly! Stop! <laughs> dead! <laughs> dead! Like, just stop. Yeah. Um, and I'll wait for him to stop doing that. Oh, if yeah, I mean, Taslin was gonna stop. Right. I, I assume by the time that you've handed it over, he's probably stopped. Sure. Okay. Sure. And then, um, I believe I have it prepared. It takes... Oh, it only takes an action to cast. Yeah, I'll, um, lay my open hand on his body, and, um, before I do anything, I'll say, uh, Nos, Wampum, just, like, hold him down. Like, hold his hands and cover his mouth. Are you, are you trying to resurrect him or revive him? Yeah, I'm gonna revive him. It's on the spell. <laughs> okay. At level three. Okay, well... Counterspelling my... Kale? My I don't want this guy back up. I revivify is <laughs> at sixth level because I'm out of slots yeah. of a lower level. Yes, yeah. Aslan just sees the spell being cast. He doesn't even know what it is. He's just well, like, stop. I mean, well, Kale has to like put his hands on it, and Aslan doesn't want this guy back up necessarily. Sure, sure, sure. sure. That's and fine. Wait. So, uh, Wampum, does, does he still have the uh, anti magic manacles? I have no idea. Uh, uh, I can look at his. Yeah, hang on, I'll look at his yes. DMD Beyond sheet because he was pretty good about. Because if he was putting the manacles on, I don't think Taslin would have an issue with it. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, give me one second, and I will check if my computer decides it wants to load things, which would be so nice of it. Um, sorry, y'all. Nothing is. I mean, obviously, I'm connected to the internet because you all are uh, <laughs> seeing me still. So, um. Let's say my campaigns. This is, I don't know about you guys, but this is like, this is when I feel like we're making the best content for viewers. Uh, <laughs> it's really dramatic. Like, I, I mean, it is. I don't see it on his list. Uh, yeah. Was when was the last time he used it? It was on another plane somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> like a fire or something. Yeah. Yeah, he has a lot of magic things on here, and those aren't one of them, so I'm gonna guess that he doesn't. Okay. Because I feel like he would have 
Because, I mean, they're what, like, uh, uh, dimensional shackles, right? Yeah. So he would have, like, that's a thing that he could have found on the, in the materials on D&D Beyond. So I'm assuming that he, in fact, does not have them anymore. That's a safe assumption. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, then back we are to the counter spell after that yeah. break. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll an intelligence check. All right. Oops. Let's see. Oops. As I accidentally exit roll 20. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> we just wanted a little more. Little yeah, more yeah. Of the... Ooh, drum roll, please. Just really draw it out. Yeah. yeah. This is going to be the one roll that Taslin doesn't whiff today. Is it? It sure nope. is not. <laughs> <laughs> it's in that one. Big it's, seven. Oh, seven. Yeah, it, okay. it was a two. <laughs> okay, so uh, Andy's uh, gasps and struggles, but you all are holding him down quite, uh, quite solidly. I will say he's also got one hit point, so like, yeah, dude ain't going anywhere. Um, at this so, like, point, go ahead. As he revives, um, I'll say you don't get to die. You have to answer for your crime. And and death is not the ultimate outcome of what's going to happen to him. That's awfully cruel, Carol. To not kill someone and then us. kill them again. <laughs> yeah. Um. So at this point, uh, the uh, uh, Annalyn and the Delahan seem to have composed themselves, uh, though they are staying very, very close together. And uh, the Delahan turns and sees Andy's uh, returns to life, and her lips sort of tighten and her brow furrows a bit, uh, but she doesn't say anything. And then she uh, turns over to, she sort of looks at each of you in turn, uh, and she ends on Taslin, and she says, Taslin Evrio. Your power has grown since you left Shadow. She will be pleased. And that's um, where we're going to take our break. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back. First and foremost, uh, now that... I'm a good streamer first and foremost now that we are back we want to say a huge 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 thank you to our first donation uh towards the trevor project during this uh during this game thank you so much jacob for your 25 dollars donation um truly you all uh if, if you're curious about the specifics of what the trevor project does uh you can uh you can check out you can check out their website uh, to get more details about them at www.thetrevorproject.org. Uh, but they really are a pretty amazing uh, organization. Uh, just their quick blurb is that they're an American not-for-profit organization founded in 1998, focused on suicide prevention efforts among lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning youth. They've got a toll-free number that they operate, uh, as well as several other services, all of which connect uh, LGBTQ plus youth to trained counselors, uh, yeah. So thank you, Jacob. We super appreciate it. And, and everybody else, uh, you know, if you can donate, that's amazing. Uh, if you can't, that is also totally fine. We understand everybody uh, has sort of different situations. So if you can't donate, uh, just a signal boost, a si signal, boost? signal boost, a tweet, uh, mm -hmm. a retweet, anything you can do uh, to let folks know that we are raising money for this awesome organization for the next uh, 28 days or so. So one more time, thank you so much, Jacob, for being our first donation of the day. We really, really appreciate it. All right, let's hop back into the game. Uh, oh. That was quite the combat. <clears throat> and uh, at this particular moment, uh, it seems that Kale still has the book. Uh, the Delahan has turned towards Taslin and said, Taslin Evrio, your power has grown since you left Shadow. She will be pleased. Uh, so... Taslin kind of bristles a little bit. Like, he doesn't really like the concept of people knowing who he is without him knowing who they are. And um, it takes a moment, and he kind of dips into, like, a polite bow and goes, Well, that lady, I must admit I was unfamiliar with your indulgences on this plane. Um... <laughs> but I am glad that my power is not going unnoticed. She says that it is not, and before we get down to business, I believe that I owe all five of you a debt of thanks. My thanks to each of you for 
understanding the truth of my enslavement and freeing me from that worm's control. I am in your debt. And yet, in a way, all of this is because of the five of you. It was you that brought me here in the first place. Our Lady of Memories has caught glimpses of the lot of you over time, has kept tabs when she so desired, and forgotten about your very existence when she wished, as is her way. But when she had need of you, she could not find you. And so she sent some few of us out to seek what she of the shadows could not find. For months we have searched, and at last I have found. I'm flattered, but I'm, I'm spoken for. I'm, I'm serving <laughs> Timora. <laughs> she, uh, she turns to you, Nas, and she nods and says, um, what I will, uh, the information I have to impart and the command I have to give, and she sort of can't help but glance in Taslin's direction at that, uh, does not bind the majority of you. You are free, of course, to continue to serve your Lady Tamora. She has served you well today, and you her, and I would not think to stand in the way of that. It's real serious, kind of a long-term thing. Uh, she does turn to Kale, and she says, I understand your concerns, but would you be so kind as to return that to my... She sort of pauses and goes with, to Enelin. Um... No, I don't think I will. <laughs> Um, are you bound to this plane by the book? Is it a requirement for you to have this book here, to be here? Um, it is complicated. The book has power over me, though I may, unless otherwise commanded by its wielder, go and come as I please. The book was left in Enlin's hands for safekeeping. And though I do not blame her for Andy's taking control of it, I would feel much better if I took such a powerful artifact and kept it elsewhere. Yes, me too. Um, if I were to give the book back, what guarantee do I have that it wouldn't fall into false hands again and that you wouldn't continue chopping off heads? You saw what it did to me, much less to the people of this town. I have no intention of allowing it to fall into any hands but my own again. Mm -hmm. It will be returned to Shadow and kept safely there in a place that only I will know of. So you say that. Um, but I've been to the Shadowfell and it doesn't seem to be inhabited um, by a majority of creatures that would not want to cut heads off. Kale, um, perhaps if I speak, you've been to some of the more unpleasant parts of the Shadowfell. The she sh sort of... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the Shadowfell, while I can understand your trepidation and your concerns, there are... There is beauty in the Shadow... There are eternally moonlit ponds and groves, uh, forever serene and cloaked in darkness. There are places of beauty and places of safety within it. Um, I would know, I've lived there a long time, but you simply have been in the worst places of shadow. Mm -hmm. in your time there. Taslin speaks true. The nightshade flower is one of the loveliest and one of the deadliest. There is beauty and complexity in the Shadowfell. Uh, but all of that is unimportant. What is important is that while Enelin 
had some not insignificant measure of my power, I am many times more capable than she at keeping my book safe. Why did you give it to her in the first place? She sort of, uh, one side of her mouth quirks up and she says, uh, (laughs) it seems that even for one born of opposing planes, one who lives in darkness, it seems that even for one such as that, occasionally the matters of the heart blind us to the wiser course. And she sort of reaches back and takes Enelin's hand, and Enelin looks absolutely mortified by all of this. Uh, not by the hand-holding, but by the she fucked up and let the book go. Uh, so she seems somewhat mollified when when the Dullahan says this. Uh, but, yeah. So, um, I wonder, do... Does, is the book required, like, if, could we destroy the book, and would you continue to exist? She, uh, she looks, uh, panicked is not quite right, but very <laughs> concerned, because you all uh, have, may have shown yourselves to be quite powerful. Uh, she says, I would not cease to exist, but I would no longer exist as I am now. My power is bound to that book, and I would ask most sincerely that no harm come to it. And there is a slight edge to that. Uh, would it be a noticeable edge or something I should probably roll an insight check? For, uh, for you, roll insight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. No, she's just like, please don't hurt my book. Yeah, yeah, he gets it. <laughs> um... So, you understand my concern, right? Even in your best mind, you may, your judgment may be clouded again by your love for this woman, and you may wind up giving the book up, maybe not to her, but to someone else, and it could fall into false hands once again. Uh, she, she, her mouth tightens a little bit again, and she says, I absolutely understand your concerns, and... You must understand that you can't possibly be more concerned about my loss of self-autonomy than I am. You five are quite powerful, but it is... perhaps an exercise in hubris to think that you, mortals, can protect it better than I can now that I know what may happen should I allow it to fall into the wrong hands again. So you didn't know, before it fell into the wrong hands, that if it did fall into the wrong hands... I did not consider fully. The error of my ways is not something I deny, nor is it something that I intend to repeat. So it's entirely possible there could be more to the power of this book than you know right now, even. And it could fall into the wrong hands again. She steps towards you, and Enelin sort of pulls her back a little bit, uh, and she takes a breath, and she says, All of that is true. But you, and your companions, capable though you are, do not have my trust so deeply that I would leave this book in your control and under your protection. Well, we don't need your trust. I already have the book. She takes a deep breath and sighs, and Annalyn is just looking very upset, sort of like yeah. watching a tennis match. You need to be more concerned with our trust in you. How can you convince us that if we give you this book back, it won't fall into the wrong hands again? I have done what I can do to convince you. I have given my word. Don't make me take it from you. Uh, is going to kind of clap his hands together and be like, all right, um, well... <clears throat> I'm in favor of returning the book to her. Kale, I understand that you don't trust her. However, she was controlled, as you have controlled so many in your actions and commands. I say we return it. We already have way too many items <laughs> beyond our depths that we simply can't take another one on. So many books. And 
if you do not do this, not only will I take a front to it, but I may not... I may reconsider our friendship. I understand being blinded by love, as you all know, and I don't think that she will make the same mistake twice. And Tazlin's gonna step, like, towards Annalyn and the Dullaham. Nas and Lefkadio, and I suppose Wampum as well. What are the three of you doing? I'm going to stand in between the, the faction to my left and the faction that is growing to my right. <laughs> okay. And just be ready. Uh, I'll, I'll take a step back. Okay. So that I'm a little bit farther away from the Dullahan and a little bit closer to Kale. Uh, and uh, I'm going to hold the uh, the haft of the sword out to Wampum, so Wampum can hold it. Okay. Wampum, I think this whole time, has mostly just been keeping an eye on Andy's, and every time he moves, he, like, sort of shifts his battle axe uh, in Andy's direction, so he'll happily take that sword and sort of you now use it to keep Andy's on the ground and quiet. Um, I just remembered he was there. I'm going to turn around to Kale and in a tone where it's only like me and him. Everyone else could hear me, but it's not to them. Sure. Sure. Um, I get it. I get what three people are dead. Uh, not only was Andy's a culprit, but it was her as well. And I get that you can't, she, unless she can bring them back. It's like, where's the punishment? And then there is the problem of what if this happens again? I also, tend to agree with her that it is a little bit arrogant of us to believe that we can understand the mechanisms between her and the book. The book kind of seems like it could be part of her. And if that is the case, then is it not the right thing to do to return a part of someone to that someone and allow them to regain their freedom? If something goes wrong, I sincerely doubt people like us are going to find her again. I believe that she will get a much harsher punishment if it ever does happen again. Today, however, I believe Timora is telling us we should lend a second chance. Uh, Kale will listen to all this and kind of conserve for a minute, and he'll look like something's kind of just like rolling it around in his mouth. You know, like he just kind of... Mm -hmm. And he'll uh, he'll make eye contact with Nas briefly, and look like he's about to say something. And then he'll kind of look around her at um, Ellen and say, or Ellen and the Dullahan, uh -huh. and say, "Can you give me one minute to myself to decide?" Uh... Yeah. <laughs> are you asking them to leave, or are you asking to go somewhere? No, 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 you, you guys don't have to leave, but just um, give me just one, literally one minute to consider my course of action. Uh, yeah. Are you gonna do something? Because if you are, I'm gonna need you to make a little deception check, and they're gonna check an insight. Oh, well, he's, his plan is to cast the augury spell um, to ask oh. the if it would be a good idea. Uh, yeah, let me, hang on, let me just do, let's do this. Um. Now, now I crit. <laughs> oh shit! That was to well. I promise it was a crit. I just did it to myself. <laughs> uh. She'll ask you then, uh, what you plan to do. I am a priest of a god of knowledge, and I would like to confer with them first. Before I make a decision. Uh, Annalyn just sort of looks at the Delahan and she sort of locks eyes with you, Kale, for a moment. Then she slowly nods and says, It is difficult 
to accept that all but the highest of high gods have someone who knows more than them higher up in the chain. I respect your acknowledgement of that. Question your god. Thanks. Um, and then I'll I'll take a minute and I'll look briefly. He'll make eye contact with um, Taslin, mm -hmm. and then he'll turn his attention yeah. to his bag of holding and get out his uh, his just like he's got some bones in there, and he'll just um, start rolling them and saying a prayer for Augury. So like okay. Taslin's gonna shoot him a look of like uh, I can't not support them because. She's kind of in cahoots with the god that kind of is his boss. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> like... Yeah, so the look he gives Taslin is just kind of like, um, I guess, yeah, it is kind of distrustful a little bit. Sure. Just kind of yeah. like, and then he you know, turns away to cast the Augury spell. So it'll take sure. him one minute. Okay. Kind of full 60 and seconds. and uh, phrase the question for me. <clears throat> Um, let me reread it real quick. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. Course of action for the next thirty minutes. Um, should we? Or, give or the I guess hand... specify the the course of action. Yeah. Right. Should we give the Dullahan, uh her book back directly? Great. Great. Uh, and the options are wheel, which means good results will follow. Woe, which means bad results will follow. Wheel and woe, which means good and bad results will follow. And the cop out answer of no response. Yep. Um. Wow. So the bones, so you, you cast the bones, mm -hmm. uh, and they land in some really complex positions. Um, it's not that you can't read it, but there are a lot of permutations, and it takes you uh, some time to sort of sort out where the actual final answer is. Right? There's a lot of sort of influencing shapes and things. But eventually, when you dig down to it, uh, the answer that you finally come up with is wheel. Okay. Um, he'll stand up, and he'll turn back around, and he will present the book to her. She uh, is not so proud as to not uh, allow her relief to show. <laughs> So she takes it uh, and holds it rather tightly. Uh, Enelin actually sort of steps away from it, uh, probably half involuntarily, uh, not wanting really anything to do with that particular book anymore. And she says, um, thank you. Your dedication to what is good will serve you. I'm sure it will. Um, what does this command the Lady of Shadow has for us? She turns towards Taslin and says, Taslin Evreo, you are commanded to serve, and by the blood of shadows that runs through your veins, you shall obey our lady. The rest of you, as I mentioned, are not so bound, but my guess is that you may find you wish to nonetheless. Taslin looks really sheepish. And... <laughs> Like, if he wasn't already so pale, you'd see, like, the color drain from his face. He, Taslin doesn't like being told what to do. Surprise, surprise. But, yeah, uh, I was gonna say, I'm shocked <laughs> to hear it. Yeah. And, uh, Taslin just kind of offers a nod and goes, as she wishes, so I will obey. Uh, and I he mean, she's away. not surprised by that, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, she just nods at you and says... You shall travel to Waterdeep. An enclave of Our Lady's loyal servants, the Shadarkai, have disappeared from the city. Ordinarily, this would not concern Our Lady. Indeed, she would likely not notice their absence. However, this enclave was the latest in a series of disappearances across the Sword Coast, the Dale Lands, and the Aranach Desert region. The Raven Queen grows intrigued. See what you can find of the missing enclave or their whereabouts. Scour the Sword Coast from Icewind Dale to Chult if you must, but find out where the Shadarkai are going and why. Once you've found them or have substantial evidence as to their whereabouts, 
you will report to the Fortress of Shadows to inform Our Lady directly. She has many questions for you. The Mistress of the Lost is not without beneficence. She has seen your path, Taslin, and she is amused. A Shadarkai necromancer is not unheard of, much to her displeasure. But one who refuses to get his hands dirty, shall we say, for raw materials is much, much more rare. As interesting as a thrallless death mage would be, Our Lady appreciates your healthy respect of the abomination of sentient undead, and feels that your chances of success would be much improved if you could more fully take advantage of your studies and abilities. She therefore grants you a boon, and she steps towards you, Taslin, and she uh, reaches out and literally pulls at some of the shadows in the room, and she really has to, like, draw a lot of them from the corners, because, oh, uh, Casey, how, they'd only last for a minute, right? So you're not, you're not shining anymore, right? Oh, no, yeah, my feathers exploded okay. as soon okay. as I gave the book over. Uh, <laughs> so, so she gr literally grabs shadows from around the room and pulls them in and begins to shape them. Uh, and... Uh, it takes a moment for you to understand what it is that she's shaping, and then eventually you realize that she is shaping uh, an approximation of a humanoid skeleton out of these shadows. And once she's finished crafting it, she touches it lightly on the forehead, and a glowing sigil, the sigil of the Raven Queen, appears uh, on the forehead of this shadow skeleton. Rather than use the corpses of dead mortals to create your servitors... You will henceforth summon the essence of shade and shape it. Our Lady of the Shadarkai gives you dominion over a portion of the souls of those Shadow Elves awaiting the time when they shall return to a corporeal form to serve her. Their bare consciousness, nothing more. Make no mistake, these souls belong to Our Lady and are yours to lease only. You must continue to use your abilities with the Weave to assert control over them day by day, and she can recall them if and when she has need of them. And the Dullahan sort of waves a hand, and the Shadow Skeleton sort of disperses, discorporates with a soft wail. I would do more for all of you if I could. You have my thanks, truly, both for saving me, and she looks at you, Kale, and for returning what is mine. My role here for now, however, is done. Take care, adventurers. Our Lady the Raven Queen is capricious and a <laughs> mysterious master. Step lightly. Protect yourselves. Now go. Enelin. Uh, this whole time, Enelin's eyes have just been getting bigger and bigger. Uh, she apparently was not aware of this particular little exchange that was going to happen. Uh, and she turns to you when you call her name, Nos. You're right. Uh, she sort of like closes her mouth uh, and nods slowly. Do you know where bricks went? Uh, Did she get out safe? The mention of someone not involved in this insanity. Uh, <laughs> she uh, she sort of snaps out of her reverie uh, and she says, uh, "Yes, yes, sorry, I um, I ran her over to." Uh, towards the town hall, and um, oh no, what is her wife's name? Gina. Gina, thank you. Uh, and Gina was uh, coming our way. I, I left I left bricks in her hands uh, to take her to get checked out by the by the town physician. Good work, and I'll put my hand out for her to shake. Uh, she takes it and sort of this this interaction that has nothing to do with commands from the Raven Queen seems to be steadying her quite a bit uh, so she'll shake your hand uh, and she finally for the first time sort of acknowledges all of you as a group and she says um, I, thank you I uh, suppose I owe you a bit of an apology for not explaining the depth of uh, my connection to my patron but um, I had faith that you all would write the situation and you did. Thank you. You were very right to have faith. We are nothing if not faithful. 
she laughs and she says, so, so it would seem. <laughs> uh, I'm going to reach my hand over to Wampum uh, and then Wampum will hand the sword back to Lovkadio uh, and then Lovkadio will walk over to the uh, headed horsewoman and uh, uh, Hilt first will hand, hand the sword back. Ah. Like, I believe this was yours. She says, yes, yes, it was. Not quite as concerning as my book, but certainly a powerful weapon, to be sure. She looks at Wampum uh, and sort of addresses him directly for the first time and says, Well done. It's been some time since someone was able to disarm me. Well done. He'll, he'll flex with his axe. His axe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like both are true. Uh... She, uh, she allows herself a grin. Uh, Annalyn says, she sort of turns to the Dullahan and she says, must they go this moment? I feel as if we owe them a bit more hospitality. Uh, might they not stay and set off in the morning? And uh, the Dullahan just sort of nods and says, um, they may, though the... Our Lady of Shadows is impatient at times. She is wont to lose track of those she has commanded from time to time. Don't think, Taslin, that this lets you off the hook for any significant length of time. But one night couldn't hurt. I, however, should. And she holds up the book and looks directly at Kale and says, Take care of this before any more time passes. If you will all excuse me. Of course. Um, and if you are returning to your queen, um, if you could intimate to her that those of us who make the material plane our home would appreciate um, her keeping a much tighter leash on her subjects, <laughs> um, we would be most appreciative. She, uh, she looks a little taken aback for a moment, and she nods, and she says... I will pass your message along. Thank you. Uh, and she goes away. She actually uh, turns around and um, pulls in some massive magic uh, as she takes her sword and cuts a line in the air. Uh, and beyond it, you see the swirling shadows and darkness and shades of gray of the shadow fell and she steps through it and the air sews itself back up uh, and there is no trace left and Annalyn sort of rolls her eyes a little bit and says she never could resist a bit of showmanship she could have done that much more simply I definitely no I see what you see in her for sure <laughs> uh, I will uh very gregariously, he's like, "Dang, Kale, you you went head to head with that one. That was that was real tense. I thought they she was gonna blow us to smithereens any second. You just stared it down. That was pretty. That was pretty rough." Well, I mean, Nos held her down for a while. It didn't seem like she was that strong. She seemed like she was acting much more powerful than she really was, which I understand if we were threatening her. Um, you know, sentience and freedom of mind. <clears throat> While they're talking, Taslin looks a little shell shocked, and he's gonna just kind of meander away from the group towards. Is that a desk? Uh, uh -huh. over like right here. Yep. He's just gonna start rummaging over the through the desk. Yeah. Uh, I mean, none of you know. It's uh, none of it's locked. It's there's a lot of blank parchment, uh, a little uh, sack of blotting sand, uh, a, several quills, a uh, pot of ink. Um, spare pot in one of the drawers. Uh, there are a few uh, pages that have numbers and figures on them, but it, it looks like mostly um, uh, like affairs of the household type things, ledgers and things like that. Uh, it doesn't. There's a few minutes from old uh, count, town council meetings, clearly from when Andy's was uh, mayor. But if he has, you know, anything more exciting or or delicate, he doesn't have it here in this in yeah. this desk. Oh. Uh, Tazlin wasn't going to loot them. He just stacks them in a nice, neat pile and starts organizing them. Cut it. <laughs> and thanks. Uh. <laughs> uh, he does sort of. Uh, actually, Andy's does sort of <clears throat> clear his throat 
and and that even that uh, action clearly pains him somewhat. Uh, he's not in good shape, um, and he uh, has the temerity to say, "And what of me?" I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn around. And I'm gonna stoop down so I'm at his eye level, and I'm just gonna grin real wide at him. Oh, oh, oh no! Uh, make me a charisma intimidation check. You can make it with advantage because he is not in a good place. Twenty. Oh, oh he pees himself a little. Perfect. <laughs> um. Well, I imagine that will be up to Mayor Bricks. Uh, make me an insight check, Kale. Uh, oh, whoops. Well, that's fine. Um, something. It's something. I, yeah, on. I bet it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I bet uh, it is. It's 30, actually. Oh, holy God. Uh, <laughs> he actually looks a little relieved when you say that. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, it's their town. We don't run the fucking place. So, anyway, um, but before we take you over there and he'll turn his attention to the bookshelves and he'll say um do you have any interesting tomes here maybe that you'd like to donate to the church of denier i think he laughs i mean i don't <laughs> I, I think at this point he's so like I, he was he died he was gonna die and then he did die and then he didn't die but he figured he was gonna die again and now he's not so sure and now you want books and he's like take take them all well, I can't take them all. That's a bit much. <laughs> what are the rarest... What would you consider um, the most informational pieces of your collection? Uh, he pulls out a few different uh, tomes from up here. Uh, a couple of, like, illuminated histories of uh, of the town. One of the town. Uh, one of this sort of area of the Sword Coast. There's one that has sort of stories of the Mirror of Dead Men, just a little ways to the south. Uh, make me one, one more insi uh, wisdom insight check, uh, Kale. Uh, that one is only a 14. Shit, I gotta actually roll this one then. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Public this time. <laughs> <laughs> there is he is uh rather conspicuously pulling books uh oh, whoops pulling books only from uh the shelves in the main part of the room he's not going anywhere near those two shelves that are on either side of his desk okay i mean uh kale will point that out and say it doesn't seem like um you're being entirely forthcoming with me which i think is a little rude since i you know, revive you. <laughs> uh, he looks to you. He sort of purses his lips. And he walks over uh, to the shelf uh, just north of his desk. Uh, and he sort of reaches in and takes out a couple of books and reaches his hand back. Uh, and he pulls something and you hear a little click and something moves. You can't really see what, but anyway, he reaches further into the bookshelf. Looks like he's reaching deeper into the bookshelf than the bookshelf is deep. Uh, and he pulls out what actually looks like uh, a fairly large uh, leather-bound tome that's been... Uh, you catch a glimpse of it, and it looks like the spine was torn directly down the middle. So this is only the front half uh, of whatever this book is that he's pulling out. Uh, but okay. he pulls it out and brings it over to you and sort of dumps it on the pile of things that he's collected for you. Half of book. Um, Kale will just kind of regard it for a moment and be like, what? Yeah, it's his spell book. <laughs> Good, I was going to ask or about that. half of his spell book, anyway. So where's the other half of your spell book? He says, nowhere near here. I could retrieve it if you would just let me go and get it. No, you can just tell me where it is. Is it in a demiplane? Or... Uh, he is like, oh, shit, why didn't I think of that? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, he says, no. It's in the town hall. Oh, that's handy. That's where we're going. <laughs> in the town hall. I suppose it makes sense since you used to be the mayor. Um... 
I'm going to take your word for it. I hope it's not a mistake. <laughs> Half of spellbook. Um, okay, cool. And I guess that's pretty much it. So you said he gave me... Uh, I'm sorry, you go ahead. I don't care about what I was about to say. <laughs> I really don't. That wasn't sarcasm. I it's okay. <laughs> Eddie's hands out. Now. Yeah, oh yeah. He, yeah, you scared him. He'll do it. Yeah, I'll uh, tie him up there. Yep. Make sure he can't can't wiggle those digits. I was gonna say tie his thumbs and his pinkies together, and mm -hmm. yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap some of it around his neck too, so he can't pull himself <laughs> oh. too far away. Yes. Okay. Um, if nobody has any objections, we're going to just go ahead and escort him back to town hall, I suppose, and someone will have to go get uh, Mayor Bricks. I I think that sounds like a good job for Wamba, maybe. <laughs> You know he'll go to the tavern first. <laughs> you let him off on his own. Uh, it's been a whole 45 seconds since he had a drink. Well, we, well, no, yeah, yeah, because we had the two flasks to go. Yeah, oh, he downed those as he ran up the <laughs> yeah. stairs. Let's be very clear about this. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead. I'll find it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we will do that on the way. Go ahead to town hall. <clears throat> yep. On the way, stay I'll, uh, a little bit behind. I was going to study okay. the spell book. Just to see oh, spell yeah. Book. It, um, I'll give you a list of them, but it's got... This looks like it's just... Let me check his spell list, and I'll tell you. Yeah, so this has got first through third level spells in it uh, that I will send you a list of shortly. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Um, all right, so Lefkadio goes off to find the town physician. Uh, to find Mayor Bricks. The rest of you uh, take Andy's over to the town hall. And Taslin, you're sort of uh, lagging behind, yes? Yeah. Tell me more. Well, Taslin's not too happy about this. I mean, you think he would be happy because he just got a cool new power, but he's also not happy about having his chain yanked and mm -hmm. being told what to do. And he kind of is like rubbing the ring of invisibility and like... He kind of mutters under his breath, like, even magic rings can't keep me hidden forever. And he's a little dour, and uh, he picks up a scimitar before he leaves. Oh, yeah. That was on the floor. Yeah. And he'll cast Identify as he's walking. Um, yeah. As a ritual. Yeah. Uh, so you, essentially, uh, it's a regular... Uh, scimitar, but it is enchanted, so it doesn't have a bonus to its attack or damage. Uh, but it does have... Oh, I gotta look and I see what exactly what dice it is. But you can use uh, a bonus action to cause it to secrete poison, uh, and it actually will secrete enough poison for three attacks before you have to uh, use your bonus action to get it to, to give some more poison. Uh, and the poison is... Give me one second, I'll tell you what the damage is on it. It is 4d8 poison damage. Um, there is there was also an enchantment that uh, you that is keyed pretty specifically to Andy's. It's clear when you cast identify on this that he was the one that enchanted it. He did it himself. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is an enchantment that's keyed to him that causes the poison that it secretes to uh, sort of interfere with one's resistances to Andy's as magic. Uh, okay. Which is but but uh, you would probably have to do some heavy enchanting to get that to, to apply to you. Yeah, I mean, Taslin has no regard for the sword. Yeah. He's, like, letting it drag behind him. Totally. Like, in the dirt, and he he's just very dour and unhappy right now. Yeah. What's new? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's that? So he's probably, like, 200 feet behind okay. the group. All right, so you all get back to Town Hall, uh, Lefkadio, you find uh, Brix and Gina uh, at the uh, physicians, and Brix is is fine. I mean, she had like you know, you I don't care. I think you saw her, or I think maybe you saw her briefly, and then I retconned it. But whatever. Like she had a few bruises. She kind of got knocked about when she was captured, but he didn't hurt her, uh, or he hadn't hurt her yet, I guess. Uh, so she's she's fine. Uh, it's mostly Gina fussing and the physician trying her best to uh, reassure her that. Bricks is fine. She's going to be fine. Uh, and so Bricks is more than happy uh, to get out of there. 
uh, and go with you to Town Hall to deal with whatever has happened. How much do you fill her in on what happened, by the way? Uh, I'll say that, uh, hey, Mayor Riggs, glad to see you. Glad to see you making it out live. Uh, do you mind if I grab that cape from you real quick? Oh, yeah. She forgot all about it. Uh, it was just keeping her warm. We, we've taken care of everything. Uh, we do have uh, nearly dead Andes that were escorting to the town hall. Would you like to accompany me uh, so we can uh, meet out whatever justice you want to meet out? Uh, she gets real serious. She looks real serious. Uh, and she just sort of nods. Uh, and we'll go. We'll go with you. Uh, she's pretty quiet on the way over. Uh, clearly thinking about a lot of things. Uh, and so you all arrive. Uh, and Town Hall is, is pretty simple. Uh, it's, you know, the majority of the building is taken up by a big meeting hall with a sort of gallery uh, for that townsfolk can can use to... Um, to come in and observe proceedings when when the council is in open session. Uh, there are a few, I mean, they're like drunk tanks more than anything. Like, they're not super secure cells or anything, but there are, you know, places uh, that prisoners can be put. But I'm going to assume that you all uh, would prefer to trust Andes to your own hands and, uh, and rope at the moment. So I assume he's not in any of those. Um, and so Lefkadio and Brix and much to Brix's uh, chagrin, Gina, walk in uh, and there you all are. And she, uh, Brix, walks uh, straight up to the front of the room where you all are and just sort of takes takes in everyone that's here, takes in Andes, who is, to be very clear, has, has one hit point, does not look good. Uh, and she just sort of takes a seat. Uh, in what is clearly sort of the mayor's chair behind uh, sort of the center seat at this big table up on the front of the room. And she just sort of hot, sighs and puts her face in her hands for a minute. <clears throat> and she looks up and without looking at Andy's, she sort of says, well, I don't suppose you have a defense or an excuse. And Andy's just sort of chuckles and, uh, doesn't even bother responding. And she sighs, and she says, uh, it's not my place to decide this on my own or immediately. I'll have to convene the rest of the council, considering what he put us all through. What would the five of you suggest in terms of keeping him secure through the night? Cut oh, off his bind. hands. Well, don't cut them. Oh, oh, shit. Exactly. <laughs> that would be the safest course of action, but um, you know, just bind his bind his hands and mouth, and make sure he doesn't have any uh, reagents for arcane spellcasting in them. Specifically for the spells in this book, and he just like lists them off. Oof. Uh, yeah. We she... should probably also search him to make sure he has no amulets or jewelry with magical effects he did enchant the sword and i'll just kind of set it on the ground oh also if you could tell us where the other half of the spell book is in this building that'd be great uh yeah i'm checking this i don't think he has anything else any other magical accoutrement on him but i'm just double checking nope okay um he uh he says, uh, funny enough, it's in the cell that you're likely going to keep me in for the night. Convenient, no? A little. Um, what? I assume it's hidden in the cell. Is it behind a just false says, wall? Or... Yes. In what way? How will I know where to find it? Very cleverly. I'm happy to retrieve it for you. You can come with. Oh, no, you're just going to tell me where it is, and then I'm going to go get it myself without you there. He shrugs and says, uh, if you can find the proper brick to push, the compartment door will open quite freely for you. It's on the right side, upper half of the cell. Would have to see it to show you exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, 
I'll look to Bricks, and I'll say, if you could show me where that cell is before he gets into it, I will investigate myself. The cell on the left, he sort of calls as Bricks and, and uh, Kale walk that way. Uh, the rest of you, uh, go ahead and make me, Kale, make me an investigation check, and I assume you're going to take your time with this. Go ahead and do it with advantage. Sure. Uh, while he's doing that, the rest of you, talk to me. Anything in particular? I am watching Andy's like a hawk. I am Good. his shadow. Same. <laughs> Uh, Taslin. Oh man, uh, Taslin is keeping an eye on Andy's. If he goes to cast a spell, I'll counter it. <laughs> but with my last remaining slot. Yeah. Uh, excellent. Okay. Uh, Lufcario, can, can I get my, can I get my, get back, oh, please. You go. Thank oh. you. <laughs> hey. Back on it goes. Uh, excellent. All right, Kale, what'd you get? 25. Uh, so you do eventually, it, it, it does, it takes a little while. There's a lot of, <laughs> they're not big stones back there that, that form the walls of this cell. There's quite a few of them. So it takes a little while, but you do eventually find it. Uh, and you push uh, the stone and you hear a little door click open some ways to your left uh, or a little panel click open to your left uh, and a another stone sort of slides to the side and behind it is uh, you know a, a perfectly book sized uh, chamber that is empty um i will i'll stick the staff of healing which um just to clarify i picked up before i left the house sure, um, sure. <laughs> Uh, I'll take that and I'll just like poke around inside that hole to see if there's anything invisible in there or something. Uh, yeah, so you sort of poke it around and you're like, you know, really stirring it around, getting all the sides, uh, sort of, you know, pushing the, the staff in deeper to check all the sides. And it keeps going beyond where the back wall of this compartment is. Mm. And eventually you knock against something. Okay. Um... Would it be possible? Like, is it wide enough for me to like try and scoop it, like scrape it out, like? Uh, yeah. How big is that staff? I mean, it's a normal staff size. Whatever, it's whatever your awkward, judgment is. Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Perfectly so the average, other. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna give you inspiration at the end of tonight. <laughs> oh darn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, cool. so sure, why not? You can you can sort of scoop out uh, the back half of that book, and it's very I mean immediately very obviously uh, the back half of of the the book that you have the front half of, uh, and it's got uh, an ever diminishing uh, number of spells uh, up through sixth level. It appears. Okay. Cool. Uh, I will investigate that and see what uh, spells are in it, and I'll suggest as I'm doing it, like without looking up from the book, he'll just be like to bricks. Um, I would suggest checking the rest of the cells, just make sure that there's nothing uh, else hidden in them before you put anyone inside them. Uh, yeah, she looks actually kind of horrified that she wasn't, you know, that they've been keeping folks in these cells that might possibly have ways out. Uh, but so she does. She'll, she'll take a little while. To do that. <laughs> That's it. Other than that, I'm going to just head back. Okay. All right, so uh, we have established the method in which we are going to restrain and uh, all of that uh, Andes for the night. Brick says that she will convene. Obviously, this is a pressing matter, so she will convene the council uh, as early as she can the following day. Uh, you know, as soon as she's able to get the word to everyone. Uh, Annalyn invites you all, if you would like, to sup at her uh, at her cottage, which you all have been to, so you know it ain't much, but uh, it's the offer that counts, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, what are we doing to finish out the night? Um, Gina, Gina hasn't hasn't really stopped, like, she tried to follow Bricks into the cell, and like, Bricks is like, you really have to wait out here. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's obviously very grateful to all of you. Um, just for my part, what, what Kale will do is will be determined by exactly what spells are in that book. Uh, yeah. But everyone else, obviously, yes. has their own I, I will, I will 
will send those your way. Uh, I'll send you a message on Discord with the list. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, anybody else have anything in particular you want to do tonight? Otherwise, we can sort of move this along, but I'm happy to roleplay any <laughs> celebratory whatever you want to do tonight. Yeah, Taz will celebrate. <laughs> Willie? Yeah, I, I assume he usually goes drinking with Wampum. Or at least since the beginning of this adventure, yes. Um, so he'll probably hit up the tavern really hard. Okay, yeah. Hard. Hard. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Anybody else? We all know Wampum's going to go with you, but... All right. Um, obviously, oh, I'll yeah. check up on uh, Edrio and Campbell and Diaz, make sure they're okay at some point. Check in on who? Oh, Our yes, mouse. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're fine. Uh, yeah. I do have those names written down somewhere that was like, I know I know those names. Okay. I don't think they're NPCs I introduced. <laughs> uh, I know I haven't read through the first part of this adventure in a few weeks, but I don't remember those names. Uh, yes, that's fine. Uh, uh, cool. All right. So, uh, Taz, let's have a constitution save from you, please. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I I'm pretty decent at these, I think. Okay. Not that my rolls are good. <laughs> well. I, you preach into the choir. Yeah, it's true. All right. A hey! Nat 20? You get real drunk and don't have a hangover at all. Oh, man. That's just the best. <laughs> the, um, the, the bartender, uh, he, he just, like, he sees you coming, and you have that look. Like, he's been bartending long enough, he knows. And he knows you're going to get real drunk, and so he keeps uh, swapping out. Uh, like, every time you ask for another ale he brings you first a tankard of water and then brings you a tankard of ale he doesn't bother with wampum because like mm, uh wampum, wampum might kill him if he gets served water uh but he uh he does it for you so yeah, you're totally uh, fine the next day yeah I'll, I'll tell him that he can take the collar off now and say it looks stupid it was a bad fashion choice as i oh. get progressively more <laughs> drunk <laughs> great uh, i'm assuming news. they're all wearing that massive heavy collar and time yes. just gonna be like those collars are really dumb and they won't save your life. And anyways, I've already solved the problem. You might as well just take them off. Uh, so from that point forward, uh, he he sort of sends out one of uh, like one of the the servers uh, at the bar to go like check up on the news, I guess. And like he comes back a little while later, and you all don't pay for drinks uh, for the rest of the night after that, for sure. Sorry, he would have uh, said we, not I. <laughs> great. Uh, cool. So the next uh, the next day, if we're cool with that, uh, the uh, you all spend. Are you spending the evening with Annalyn, or are you sp staying at the inn? Oh no, I'm gonna go out somewhere where there's a hundred by a hundred foot area that I can use, and uh, I will summon a temple of Denir out there and, and stay in that. I'll be going with Kale. Thanks. So extra. Uh, <laughs> great. <laughs> Great. Okay, Annalyn, like, at first is a little put out, and then she see like, she, if you don't mind her coming along to, like, not necessarily go in, but she just wants to see what you're gonna do, and she's like, oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, over that the course of an hour, hour, yeah, like, all these, like, the walls will come up, and it's, like, all opulent looking and shit. Uh -huh. And just, I don't know if, if this matters, but, um, I can keep things from being able to go in there easily, depending on the creature type. Mm -hmm. So it would be, you know, um, Fae and Fiends and Undead would have sure. trouble getting there. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. So uh, the next day, uh, you all uh, gather again at Town Hall. Uh, Brix has uh, sort of gotten the word out to all of the uh, remaining council people. Um, and they are going to be gathering uh, around midday uh, to decide the fate of Andes. And Brix asks if you all will be. Uh, staying long enough for that, or if you must be on your way. I need to get to water tea. Yeah, I think we should go, actually. She, uh, she nods, and uh, she sort of says, I, uh, I'm sorry to hear it, but I expected as much. Um, you are, of course, all always welcome here uh, as guests of my own. I... Uh, imagine that there are not many in this town that wouldn't be happy to see you whenever you so desire to visit. Uh, 
and uh, Tibbs is likely to continue. She sort of looks towards Wampum. Uh, Tibbs is likely to continue to uh, let the ale flow free for you uh, should you ever return to us. I wish I had more for you. Uh, but my thanks and the thanks of the town will unfortunately have to do for now. What I can do for you is uh, speak with your voices at this council meeting. It seems only right that the five of you have some say in what happens to the prisoner, or at the very least uh, offer suggestions as to his fate. Death. She, her, yeah, she sort of tenses a little bit, but she nods. If you want a fate um, worse than death, you can, like I said, cut off his hands, maybe his tongue too, so he can't do magic ever again. She can't help but, like, crack a little smile, and she says, I, I will, I will suggest that to the council. It's just, it's just an option. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> She says, no, 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 not at all. I, it, is, it is not an unwise suggestion, I will admit. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a servant of the, man, of the Banyan, and uh, Lord Firemane teaches us that everyone has a purpose and can be useful for something. I don't know how that would apply to this man, uh, who is clearly vile and evil, uh, but perhaps there is some purpose that he can still serve purpose for him in the lower planes <laughs> if we're looking to make a purpose of him currently i do have a spell that if i kill him with it he will rise it's a thrall under my control oh it's like community service uh bricks looks a little surprised <laughs> uh and there we go uh she looks a little surprised and uh, she says, um, uh, well, that is certainly an option I can present to the council, but um, you would have to wait around to, um, to hear their ultimate decision, our ultimate decision, before carrying that out. And I think maybe you're in a hurry? Yes, uh, just hang him is my vote, <laughs> and yeah. Um, she sort of nods, somewhat relieved. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I'm I'm unconcerned about what you did. He committed, the crimes that he committed were against your uh, village, and so whatever form of government that you have set up, um, you know, you, you, you need to come to your own conclusions about things, I think. So... But, you know, if you want, if we wind up coming across his path again and he's up to some nefarious shit, we're just going to kill him, so. She, uh, yeah, she nods. <laughs> she's, she's very happy that she doesn't have to make this decision on her own. Uh, <laughs> was that everybody? Oh, what does Wampum want to do with him? Probably kill him. Probably kill him. Probably. Kill the skinny elf. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Burned elf. Cool. Okay. She just, she, yeah, she knew that was coming, I guess. Uh, so she says, well, uh, again, I, I really, I can't, I can't thank you all enough. And, and I, I wish there was more I could do, but I will pass your words along to the council. Justice will be had one way or another. And if you're ever back down this way, you're always welcome. <laughs> All right, well, um, thank you very much. We're happy to help. Um, if you ever need help again, I guess if anybody knows how to cast the sending spell, just send any one of us, and we will see if we can get help to you. We'll always be eager to lend a dull hand. Fuck uh, off. I just leave. I <laughs> <laughs> Tazlin cracks a grin for the first time and probably a good solid eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> may have been saving that for a while. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> cool. So, what's next? Um, so I suppose we're on the road back to Waterdeep. So this village was like in the High Moor still? 
Uh, yeah, let me pop up this map that I have, and I'll let you know sort of uh, how far you have left to go. Also, I need to oops, see it again to remember exactly where I placed this little town. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, so this is... Oh, no, you're... you're I kept saying the Mirror of Dead Men, and I meant the High Moor. Yes, you knew what oh. I meant, even though I kept misspeaking. Uh, the Mirror of Dead Men is actually north of Waterdeep. Yes, this is on... Well, it's actually a little bit out of the High Moor. It's sort of on the northwestern corner uh, of the High Moor, uh, right where the moor meets the Misty Forest. Uh, yeah. You're, like, less than a day's travel from the, the Delambir River. Uh, and uh, Or you could go a little further west and, and get through... Uh, find the tradeway, pass through Daggerford, and get up to Waterdeep that way. Y'all's choice. Uh, I mean, we kind of been to Bat Daggerford, been there, done that. Yeah, it's definitely it. like uh, not that I necessarily think uh, the open road is dangerous for you lot, but you know, the tradeway is the safer, if somewhat slower way. You all can pass through the mountains and sort of cut across a little bit faster if you if you stay. Uh, if you stay to the north and east of the of the tradeway until you get a little closer to Waterdeep. Either way. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, Kale would suggest sticking near the road just as much as possible. That's what you should do. All right. And if that's cool... Other, with... other thoughts? <laughs> um, Sounds good to me. Along the way, at some point, Kale will approach Taslin. And, well, let me ask you something first. Um, and, you know, can I would would I have been able to like maybe mending spell the book back together to make one complete book? Or oh, a bit much. Uh, much. interesting. Yeah, I don't see why not. The binding itself wasn't. Uh, I mean, obviously he was able to to tear it, so the binding itself wasn't magical. So sure, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I'll bind it back together and I'll um, yeah, kill approach Tazlin and say this was his spell book. Um, I think you know most of the spells that are in here already, but if you if anybody here could make use of it, it would be you. And he'll hand the spell book over, and I will uh, you know send you the spells on Discord. Graham, uh, I will take it. Um, thank you, Kale. I do appreciate it, and I will take a look at it. Um, I do apologize for anything I said or did in the manner. Um, that's fine. Um, he looks genuinely, like, kind of, uh, like, a little confused, because to him, like, he didn't, like, notice you counterspelling him, because he was busy revivifying a guy. Um, but, I mean, you did kind of side with them, but it's like, they're from where you are, so it's, yeah. So you get the feeling he's just a little bit like, you know, whatever, like he's cool. He says, um, I understand what it, it means to serve uh, a higher power that you may or may not always agree with. Um, and I don't, I don't fault you for it. I, I appreciate that. Um, but you, you do understand that the rest of us are not servants of the Lady of Shadows. I have gathered that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just do with that information what you will. But we, we may not embark on her commanded quest uh, immediately. I still think getting rid of some of the items that we have is a little bit more important than finding some missing Shatter Kai. I don't disagree. However, if we take too much time, I will have to depart to do this. It's understandable. And help urge Edra, like, away from Tazlin. Yeah. From Camelot and Diaz? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sigh. Alright. Um, so, 
I mean, the trek up to uh, to get a little closer to Waterdeep is pretty uneventful. Is there anything sort of over the course of your several days, a couple, couple few days of travel up there uh, that I should be aware of that you all are doing or saying or accomplishing or anything like that? Taz I'm gonna, is going to test out that spell uh, and mm-hmm. try and raise some shadowy figures. Yeah, so we'll see over the course of the few days that you're going, uh, you sort of, uh, you know, do some experiments with it and figure out exactly how it works. Um, it does not work on the open road in full sunlight, right? There have to yeah. be shadows uh, somewhere near-ish by for you to actually pull from. Uh, that said, you know, you can go to the shade of a tree uh, if, if you need to and pull it for the most part there. Um, you do... Uh, it is... You've raised... You've raised corporeal undead yeah. before, right? This is different. There is um, obviously it's different when you form them, but once they once their sigil begins to glow and they're able to uh, take your commands, they have that that uh, shard of soul uh, in them. There is uh, it's like she said, like it is just the barest consciousness of the soul, but even that feels different than the completely, you know, mindless undead of zombies and skeletons. There is definitely something about uh, keeping sway over these things that obviously, uh, you know, the Raven Queen doesn't care about because she holds these souls in reserve. You know, the, the stories say that that when a Shatterkai dies, their souls uh, wait until she's ready to call them back forth to serve her. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a little unsettling. Uh, and the more of them you create and the more of them you hold on to, the more sort of acutely you sense that uh, personality almost in each of them. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, it, it, it works surprisingly similar to what you're used to in terms of exerting the control over them and how much uh, you know energy and concentration it takes for you to cast the spell, things like that. All right. Uh, are they like shadows in that they can adjust sizes or shape like shadows or are they just entirely for statistics just skeletons yeah in terms of statistics they're just skeletons the shadows themselves uh uh actually do uh become dense enough that they're they're basically corporeal uh things like that what i will say is when you're shaping them uh you know if you want to put some variations in them if there's something specific you know they need to to be effective they need to sort of maintain the basic bipedal two-armed humanoid-ish shape, but if yeah. you want to play with specifics for certain reasons, that's totally fine with me. But in terms okay. of stats, they're they're just uh, skeletons or zombies, you know, you can sort of use either one as you normally could. Um, those of you who, who are, are not aware, who may be watching and don't uh, know all of the, the details about the Raven Queen, she's not a big fan of, uh, of sentient undead, uh, undead in general, particularly sentient undead, and uh, Graham came to me and sort of said, you know, it feels a little silly to never have undead thralls because I don't like them and neither does my mistress. Uh, <laughs> so we worked out this uh, this little workaround that I think is super cool. Uh, during the travels, mm-hmm. um, when we were in Neverwinter, one of the Harpers hooked Lafcadio up with a lock picking set. Um, Lafcadio does not have uh, proficiency in it, but okay. uh, when he was in Waterdeep, he picked up a uh-huh. uh, hundred gold pieces worth of locks. And during <laughs> during his downtime, he's I been practicing. This. Okay. Uh, so he would like to continue practicing uh, during the travels. Absolutely. Have you been keeping track of the, the days that he spent practicing? I haven't, no. That's okay. <laughs> I, I, can start. I didn't, know, I didn't yeah. know how detailed we were getting with this. Okay. So. Uh, great. That's fine. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we will. That uh, I'm all about training. Uh, I think there are other ways than leveling your character that you can learn to do things. So yeah, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we can maybe one of these days, Lefkadi will be able to pick a lock of his very own. Okay. Uh, great. Anything else? Um, related to that, first off, it, um, Kale is like helping him do that because it's with a channel divinity. Like every short rest for yeah. 10, 20 minutes at a time, he can gain proficiency in these tools, so he would like to learn how to do it, too, you know, without having to do the channel ah. Okay. So, so wait, um, Kale is also learning to, I mean, is using that on yeah. himself. To, okay. Right, so, like, he'll know how to do it for 20 minutes at a time, and then, right. like, he'll take notes, and the two of them will collaborate together or whatever. Oh, I love that. I'm trying to figure it out. Um, I love that. That actually makes a lot more sense than just sort of going at it blindly without a teacher, which feels like it wouldn't really go super well for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, maybe eventually. <laughs> um, maybe eventually. 
Also, when we were in Waterdeep last, uh, uh-huh. they bought Kale bought a pot of Awakening and put a bush in it. Um, by the time we had gotten to the Feywild, First. it hadn't turned into it hadn't awakened yet. Okay. Um, but if you want to decide when that'll happen, uh, feel free. I do. Uh, we'll talk about how long ago it was that you got it and a few other details, and we'll. Uh, I will. Let me make a little note of that, and we'll chat about that offline. Okay. Okay. Uh, a note for long rest. Every time we take a long rest, uh, okay, we'll set up the temple of the Denier, and he'll deny the same three things that I listed before. Great. Um, just in case anything happens. And I think that's mostly it. Okay. Nos, anything on your end? Nope. Uh, not going to tell anybody about my experiences at Waterdeep. Just going to hope things go well. Okay, great. Yep. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Uh, great. So that is where we're going to wrap up for tonight. I know that is less cliffhangery than I uh, like to, to do, but uh, that'll do for today. Good good story stopping point chapter end. Uh, we'll pick it up next Sunday uh, as you all approach the south gate into the city of Waterdeep. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks so much for, for hanging out. Uh, I'm so excited that we got through the end of Ghastly Grins, the awesome adventure out of the Uncaged Anthology. That one was written by uh, Judy Blackcloud, who's been hanging out in the chat and being awesome uh, this this whole time. Thank you so much for your adventure and for hanging out with us. Uh, please head on over to the DMs Guild. We just linked uh, the the item in chat. Go check out this awesome book of a bunch of different adventures for all level characters, 1 through 20, all tiers of play. Uh, really, really cool piece uh, that subverts uh, and, and switches up tropes uh, and mythological uh, female mythological figures and sort of turns their stories on their heads. Super awesome. Uh, and volume two is going to be uh, coming up before long. So get your hands on volume one before that happens. Uh, what else do we have to say? A huge, huge thank you to another donor uh, who donated to the Trevor Project. Thank you so much to Doc Skills for your donation. Again, the Trevor Project is an amazing organization and, and every dollar that you all donate helps. So thank you so much, Doc Skills, for that donation. Uh, you can continue to donate. Uh, uh, through us for the Trevor Project all the way through the month of June. Uh, please do that, or if that's not something that you're able to do, uh, you know, a tweet, a retweet, a signal boost in any way, shape, or form is much appreciated. Uh, we would love to hit our $500 goal by the end of the month, so thank you all so much uh, for helping us do that. Alright, I think that's the housekeeping. Let's go around one more time quickly and let everybody know who we are, where they can find us, and anything else we should know about you. Let's start with... Vinny. My name is Vinny. Uh, I play Kale Irvine, obviously. Uh, I've been doing it for three hours straight just now. I, my name is Scuzzery on a lot of things. If you run into somebody named Scuzzery in like Overwatch or something, that was probably me. Uh, I'm a huge asshole in that game because I don't like people telling me what to do. So, <laughs> Great. Uh, sorry, but not sorry, really. Uh, I don't exist anywhere else. That's it for me. Fantastic. Carl. Uh, I'm Carl. I have been playing Lafcadio. Uh, I also play Pillier de Winter uh, Tuesday nights on this channel starting at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and that game is with Casey, uh, who is in a lot of other games because she's awesome. And that's everywhere I am. All right. Uh, Graham. Hi, I'm Graham. I play Taslin Evriel, uh, the moody salt mine that, that he is known by. Uh, and you can find me on Twitch at Graham Crackers with a Z. Or, alternatively, I stream on Fridays and play a DD and d game that I DM in uh, on Twitch TV slash Nairoki. That's N-I-R-O-K-I-E. And we have a whole bunch of cool guest stars all the time, so check us out. Awesome. I love it. Last but not least, Casey. Hi, I'm Casey, Casey H on social media, and I have been your Hobgob Angel, Champion of Time War, and Paler of Plains, Heckler of Big Fire Chickens, and She Who Would Fight the Storm, Nos of Neverwinter. Yes. Besides uh, being with Carl uh, Tuesday nights at 9 p.m., um, you can also find me over at the Greyhawk channel. And uh, those shows are uh, Fridays at 5 p.m., that's the Old Faith with the uh, NPC Bree. 
And coming up this Tuesday, first episode is uh, The City of Gods, which also uh, is going to have an amazing cast of people. Very interesting characters. We've already kind of done a little playthrough, and we got some good chemistry going on. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, and that is on at 9 a.m. on Tuesdays. Right. That's me. And I am Eugenio, also known as your friendly neighborhood Dungeon Master, DM Jazzy Hands. I am the Dungeon Master for the actual play podcast, The Last Refuge. We are rapidly approaching our two-year anniversary middle of next month. Uh, so check us out at, you can follow us on social media, you can follow me on social media at DM Jazzy Hands. Uh, you can follow... You can follow my podcast on Twitter at, at DND Last Refuge. That's at D, the letter N, D, Last Refuge, or go to our website, dndlastrefuge.com. We've got uh, some really fun and exciting giveaways and events for our anniversary coming up. We're probably going to do a live stream for the anniversary itself. So keep an eye on all that. Uh, enter the giveaways when we announce them. We've got uh, some cool stuff that I am excited to announce that we're going to give away. Uh, what else? You obviously can catch me here every Sunday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern with these half right heroes. Uh, also, starting tomorrow, uh, tomorrow's our first, my first session of another uh, game that I'm going to be DMing on stream. This one on the Greyhawk channel. I am DMing the Brenton Files Monsters and Myths. A, uh, the short description that I have been using is Penny Dreadful, but make it D&D. Uh, a group of monster hunters uh, sort of fuck up and get demoted and sent out to a little quiet, sleepy backwater nowhere town named Brenton, uh, where, of course, it being D&D, they quickly discover that it is not, in fact, as quiet or sleepy as their superiors thought. So our very first game is tomorrow on the Greyhawk channel at 1 p.m. Eastern, so come check us out there. Uh, you can also find me on Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern on Encounter Roleplay, playing Kaladin, a human cleric of Rao uh, in a game called Basilica of Kudgel, also set in Greyhawk. What else? I think that's it. Uh, you should also check out uh, this month uh, the Variant Roles Twitch channel. I'm on the Creative Council with Variant Roles, and we have just kicked off our Pride Month uh, celebration. Tuesdays this month, we're going to have uh, Tuesdays and Sundays, Sunday mornings, we're going to have uh, different types of Pride programming. Uh, highlighting uh, queer uh, content creators and gamers and players and games and all kinds of cool stuff. So go check out that channel as well. Um, anything else? Carl, did I miss anything? Did anybody else donate that I need to shout out to real quick? Got it all. No, I think we're good. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, excellent. Well, thanks for thanks for hanging out, everybody. Actually, Carl, do you mind if we, uh, if we do a little raid tonight on Variant Rolls? Because it looks like they're in the middle of a game right now. That's exactly what I was going to do. Amazing. So hang out then. Um, come check out what's going on. Uh, one? Where am I from? Uh, what's going on over at Variant Rolls. Uh, and thanks so much for watching. We will see you all next week on Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern right here at Gratuitous RP. Have a great day. Let's hop over to uh, Variant Rolls where they're playing an Urban Shadows game. That's what's going on right now. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Everyone.